Redditors who have outrun cops. How do you do it? My time to shine. I was 17 and um, on my way to a meeting a few towns over. Where I live is so flat you can watch your dog run away for 3 days, so there are often long stretches of road in an open field. I was turning left onto a two-lane highway when I saw these two cars blow past me, going the direction I was going at at least 90 miles per hour. I said well, let's make this a convoy. I got up to about 120 to catch up to them, and I was about with them when I saw a semi-truck coming in the opposite direction. I thought to myself, man, how boned would I be if there was a cop driving behind that semi? Sure as God's got sandals, there was a cop driving behind the semi. The first two cars passed, and I just saw his lights come on as I passed him. I thought oh fuck, reckless op, jail, I'm going to lose my license, I'm faked. I start slowing down and reach into my wallet for my license when I see a house coming up on my right on a small side street. There was the house and a two car garage off to the side. I slammed on my brakes and took the turn and I pulled right into this perfect stranger's open garage like I own the place. I get out, shaking, because I'm not out of the woods yet. I walk out of the garage and up to the front door of the house and knock. An old lady answers and I tell her I'm here to work on my car and asked if Jack was home, all BS. She said no, I'm sorry. I profusely apologized and turned around. Just then I saw the cop fly past the house in hot pursuit of the other two cars. I got back into my car and took back roads for the rest of the trip. <laughs> Obligatory, not me, but my brother. The following is absolutely true. Gather round, redditors, as I regale you with a tale of bad luck Mike, and one of the times he got away from the man. I take you back to the halcyon days of 1990. Y2K was a decade away, and Prince had been hyping some big party he was planning, in the works for 8 years at the time. Supposed to be a hell of a bash. Mike had committed a crime in our small suburb of Fort Worth, Texas. Frankly, the crime doesn't matter at this stage in the tale. Point is, he was on the run. Fortunately, our suburb had lots of creeks and storm drains and gullies crisscrossing through it. Every neighborhood was in the vicinity of a small brook of some sort. Also fortunately, Mike was in the prime of his life. About 23 years old, 6 foot 4, thin as a rail, with a hollow leg, to hold all the beer he could steal on a given night, and the biggest swinging cork in the town, whether anyone else knew it or not, and the unmitigated gall to go with it. So Mike was running over hill and dale, crossing under a dim street light here and there, on the run to one of his friend's place. But lo. A new problem arose, the baying of hounds in the distance. Johnny Law had called in the dogs. Now Mike started jumping fences, scaring little old ladies, and he finally took to where he would have the greatest chance of losing the fuzz, the creeks. Splashing through murky water all throughout our tiny burg, Mike tried to outfox the dogs until he finally came upon an idea and headed for the police station. Now I know what you're thinking. Why in the fuck would you go kick the beehive while the bees are already on the hunt for you? But Mike had a plan. See, in Mike's mind, it made perfect sense to walk right by the cop shop. It's the last place anyone would ever think to look for him. And it had worked before. Mike once evaded arrest for a full week, while the Fort Worth cops, in a bit of jurisdictional cooperation, tossed our town to bits searching for him. How? Why? He sat in the FWPD lobby and caught up on his reading, for free, from the library, while they searched for him high and low. I told you. Unmitigated. Gaul. So Mike finally came upon the police station, and he sat back in a copse of trees, making sure the coast was clear. He was covered in mud and muck, all manner of nastiness, and by the sound of things, the dogs were getting closer. Heart in his throat, there was always the chance he would get seen by someone who was in the right place at the wrong time. Mike walked right by the PD, and across the street. To the little laundromat where we washed our clothes every week. At the time, in our town, pretty much all activities stopped around 8pm on the main drag. It was common to leave your front door unlocked and the keys in your car. There just wasn't that much crime. So of course, there were no cameras to see Mike kick open the door of the laundromat, close it again behind him, and strip down to his aforementioned swinging dick. Using the change in his pockets, 
He washed and dried his clothes, and he gave himself a decent scrub in the laundromat restroom sink. An hour later, Mike was walking down the street, minding his own business. Presently, the flashing lights behind him caused him to look back quizzically and give the universal hand gesture that says what did I do. An incredibly corpulent cop jumped out from the vehicle, looking like Ed had had a few too many liters of cola, and with his light in Mike's face, said I caught you. Another universally understood gesture from Mike, palms up and facing away from him, worry and innocence etched on his face. Whoa, Ed, what's up? I'm just going over to so and so's house. I'm not doing anything. Of course Mike knew the cop. Mike knew all the cops. All of us did. We'd had all of them in our house at some point in their careers, and it was well known that Mike made a cop's career interesting, starting from the age of 15, when he'd become a priest for a few hours in order to pull a truck heist. A tale for another day, gentle redditors. Ed knew he had been chasing Mike for the past hour. Mike knew it too. But Mike wasn't about to let Ed get a collar on him. I've been after your ass for an hour, Mike. I've been chasing you through the mud and sheet, and goddammit, I got you. Wait, 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 Ed, Mike reasoned. You've been chasing me for an hour through mud and sheet? Ed, I don't have a spot on me. I'm perfectly clean, man. No, I know it was you, Mike. This goes back and forth for some minutes, until Ed's on duty supervisor pulled up, lights also flashing. He stepped out, looking like an acting double for Dan Acre Yard. Okay Mike, why are you giving us a hard time? Ed caught you, let's go look Rick, Mike began. Ed says he's been chasing me through mud and cheat. I'm literally clean, Rick. I feel for you guys, but whoever it was y'all were chasing, it wasn't me. Having been presented with evidence that Mike was indeed clean and couldn't possibly have been running in creeks and streams for the past hour, Rick and Ed let Mike go. Everyone there knew that Mike was guilty. As Mike walked off into the proverbial sunset, Ed and Rick knew they would get him eventually. When they finally did a couple of years later, Mike paid daily for making them look like fools. Never worry, Mike is alive and well and continuing his into hero ways today. Edit, some kind redditor has seen, fit to reward me with gold for this story of my scofflaw brother. I have no idea what this means for me. More bad luck Mike stories will come, as various threads remind me of his exploits. Story time when I was about 14 there was this local store owner who treated kids like sheet. So kids started egging his business so one night me and my overweight friend decided it's our turn. To egg his place of course that was the night he and his friends decided to hide in the store to catch any said eggers, and as soon as I let the first egg fly they busted out the door after us, I've never seen a fat kid run as fast as. My friend he outran me, and I ran track. I still had a few eggs in my hands and I started throwing them behind me, and I could hear them cursing pointed like to think that it slowed them down from catching us, but in reality a bunch of 30 year old overweight beer drinking stoners weren't going to catch two 14 year old boys that were scared sheetless, and running on pure adrenaline we put distance between us and them quickly. So here it is, 1am in a small town, and at this point we are about 10 blocks from the place we egged we are on the business side of streets, and I want to cross the road, so we are in the houses side, where it would be a lot harder for the police to catch us. After hiding in some bushes for a bit, and looking to make sure the coast is clear we make our move no sooner than we hit the street we see a cop car like 5 blocks. Up drive from one street to the next, with a direct line from the police officer's view looking right at us suddenly you hear the screech of his tires as he shot past us, and the sound of the car being revved up in reverse, but by this time we are hopping back fences, and covering blocks and blocks in a matter of minutes. At this point I'd say we were on the run about 30 minutes, so we wind up going 10 blocks in basically a C pattern, to where we hop fences and cross yards, and we wind up by a house that has a huge weeping willow in front of it, it has a direct view of the store we egg we can see police lights, but the tree is so big we can't see past it, but it's the perfect place to hide under to see what's going on we go under it and we are probably about 7 blocks away, and take a look I sheet you not there were over a dozen police cars there this was before the small town I lived in turned to sheet, so the police routinely had nothing to do back then. So my friend is like holy sheet look at all those police cars we are faked. Meanwhile I saying out loud I can't believe there are this many police cars over one faking egg. 
My friend was panicking, and I was actually pissed that they were making this big a deal out of it so he says, let's just turn ourselves in, and I was like no faking way, if they were going to make this such a big deal I felt it was the principle that we make it back to his house and get away, even if it was just for that night. I said all we have to do is go up like 5 more blocks till we are out of sight of the police, and then cut across till we are so far away they won't even think we made it that far. He says I don't know any of that area I'm not getting bit by some dog going through backyards. I said Mathurfica we already cut through like 20 backyards and I'm pretty sure a dog is going to bark before we even get over a fence I told him he can turn himself in but I'm making a break for it. He decided to stay with me so it took us another hour of quietly sneaking through backyards until we were enough distance away we felt we could cross the main street where all the cops drove. To make it back to his place I considered it a personal victory that we outran half of the police force in our town to make it back to his place and even though we turned ourselves in in the morning, we left our bikes at the scene of the crime. Because we were idiots, I still look back at that time and smile. There is a part 2 to this story, if anyone wants to hear it. Edit, okay there is a fuckload of you that want to hear the second part of this story. I've decided to post it below my original post and I will PM each you who wanted to hear the second part. This is a super long story so get ready. And get ready to give me some gold. If you liked the story. Because this took forever. To type out point here we go. Worked late at a store. When I was 20 something. When I left. I went tearing up the road behind the store. It was curvy. And it was after midnight. Thus no traffic. I had a sporty car and was banging through gears as fast as I could. It was a lot of fun. Unbeknownst to me, there was a sheriff squad car sitting at a bank drive through under the awning. Didn't see him until I passed him and it was too late. So I just kept the throttle mashed and raced up the road. At the time, I was living in an apartment complex only about one quarter up the road from where I passed the cop. I glanced in my mirror and noticed the squad coming up the road after me, but without emergency lights on. I had a really good lead on him. I turn into the drive for my apartment complex and hit the button for the underground parking garage. Door opens, I scoot inside and park, then watch as the door closes all the way. The best part, I get out of my car and walk into the lobby. Through the glass doors, I see the sheriff's squad. The entryway is locked, you have to buzz to get in. There are about 50 apartments, and my car is underground. He was never close enough to get my plate. There's almost zero way this cop can figure out who I am, or what specific apartment I live in. So I waved to him and smiled. The look of frustration and defeat on his face was priceless. Elevator door opened, and for all practical purposes I disappeared before his eyes. So since there's no official language in the US, you can't be required to speak English. And if you don't speak English, it's incumbent on the courts and police to find a translator. Not too hard for Spanish or French, but when you start branching out even sitters have problems. I got pulled at one of those bullshit the highway speed limit is 55, the town speed limit is 25, there's one sign, and the cop is in a bush right behind the sign money makers, that a lot of small towns and rural areas like to use. I was doing 65 like anyone else, so he had me cold doing 40 over. This was in Kentucky near the O-line at about 3am. I spent a few years in West Africa, and I happened to be fluent in Moray. I also have a nicely ambiguous name that doesn't automatically lead to must speak English. So even though I have a US license, I just decided on the spot to only speak Moray and to acknowledge no English at all. I figured he wants to write a bullshit ticket. I'll make him work for it. The officer tried his best. I was from a long way out of state. He knew I wasn't coming back to contest it. That ticket was a few hundred dollars for his town. I thought he might just write the ticket and hand it to me anyway, but either he couldn't or wouldn't do it. After 45 minutes of trying to explain, he finally gave up. Didn't even give me a warning. Just handed the paperwork back, said it's fakers like you that make me hate this faking job, and went to his car and drove off. To this day, I have no idea if that last comment was just frustration, or if he knew I understood. As a kid, out with friends at night chucking eggs at some person's house. 
having a blast, laughing, when we see a car come around the corner, just headlights visible, as it's night. Being brazen little beasts, my friends continue to chuck eggs at the house as I decide to hit the car with an egg. And I did too, perfect shot, right broke right in the center of the windshield. And then the cherries came on, sheet, the call goes out, cops, and all my friends scatter every which way, running like, well, like idiot vandal kids running from the cops. I made a split second decision, and decided not to run. The cops headlights weren't directly on me, and I was mostly in the dark, and wearing dark clothing, so I dropped to the ground, rolled into the ditch, and quickly did my best to cover myself with weeds and grass I uprooted. So the cop car goes driving past me, just crawling so slowly, with the searchlight playing all around. I'm pretty much convinced I'm caught when one of my friends breaks from his hiding place down the street and runs off. The cop car squeals off after him, leaving me safe. I was home and in bed in my PJS about 5 minutes after that. Note, the some person whose house we were regging was the home of a local bully, a 19 year old who used to regularly beat up us kids, aged about 11 to 14, so I don't feel bad about egging him. Senior year of high school, the night before Halloween. My friend dressed as a banana and I dressed as a gorilla. I was going to chase him around campus during school on Halloween. So we decided to go for a quick test run around the neighborhood late at night. We ran around, and the banana costume we made was holding up real nicely. We saw a car turning around at a cul-de-sac, so we decided to run past it and see the driver's reaction. About 20 feet away from it, we realized it was a cop car. We were out past curfew, and cops really do nab you for it here. So we stop in our tracks and book it for the nearest park. Cop follows. My friend, a cross country runner, took off ahead of me in his banana suit far into the park, into a trail deep into the neighborhood. I, a chubby dude in a gorilla suit, was wheezing when I got to the park. There were some trees that were about as wide as me, so I take cover behind one of them. The cop shines his searchlight around, and I'm terrified he can see a piece of my suit sticking out from the tree. After what seems like an eternity, the cop finally turns off his light and leaves. Woo. I channeled my inner Michael Weston. I was very rudely cut off by this other motorist, and instead of letting it go, we proceed to race each other down Carlfax. Big Main Street in Denver, eventually we hit a red light together, and I started waving a baseball bat out the window at him, while he, a tire ran towards me. Problem was that a cop was watching us from across the street, and shone his lights on us, which spooked him, and in turn spooked me, so we both took off from the red light. He was in the left turning lane, and I was in the straight lane, but we both ended up taking left turns, causing the cop to peel out after us. The guy in the left lane had the advantage and speed, it was a pickup versus a minivan, so he pulled away first, and left the cops right behind me. I knew there was no outrunning the cops, so I pulled to the side of the road, while the cop pulled up next to me. The cop pulled over next to me, and was going to let his buddy out, while the driver went after the other car. I saw this as my only opportunity, to get rid of both of them. So with fear in my voice, I yelled to the cops, as soon as the passenger door was open. He was pointing a gun at me. Geo geo geo. They didn't even bat an eye, the passenger closed his door and they haul a dust towards the pickup truck who was only a few blocks away. I took this opportunity to kill my headlights, was about 10pm at night, and proceed to make a U-turn and head down a nearby street, and ditch the cops. Funniest thing, the cops pulled the guy over one block behind my house, so I took the side roads over to my place, and parked in the backyard, and then was able to walk over to where the cops, who now had the man outside his car, and was searching him and the car, and watched the whole ordeal. Only took them a few minutes after that to realize they had been had, so they let the truck driver leave, while they doubled back trying to find me. Honestly, I was super in the wrong, I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing, and I would probably still be paying off the consequences of those actions had I not thought to try something. TLDR, told cops other guy had a gun, and used the distraction, to escape from the cops. On my motorcycle broad daylight. So I was on my way to my buddy's house from the funeral we just had for his brother. My other buddy had been riding with me during the funeral and his bike broke down. 
so we stopped and got his bike and were on our way. My buddy is in the lead another buddy in a car with a police scanner is between us and him at the back point we were almost there. We turn on to Lawrence and the cop lights me up, my buddy in the car in front freaks out and pulls over, I cut into oncoming traffic dropped a second and am gone. Cop chased MD for 3 miles in the middle of the day in heavy traffic. I was squeezing through spots that were too small, running the lights, doing about 140 on my motorcycle. When I got on the highway and cut across to the shoulder and took off the guineas when they stopped chasing me. Well it turns out my temporary plate had corroded and was not visible and because I looked suspicious, although I thought I looked nice. Anyway it turned around erupted half of the funeral guests watched me start the chase and half were at the finish line. When I got to the house for the reception everyone was coming up to me telling me how gnarly it was that I did that on that day. That was my third chase via motorcycle. Pretty late to the party here but oh well. It was about 7 to 8 years ago. I was at a high SL graduation party for a friend. He was a cool kid and had your typical cool parents. So naturally he had a keg at his open house. Surprisingly it was a pretty chill party for the most part. Not your typical sheet show of drunk high school kids you would expect. I think it was because his parents and some older family members were there and kind of kept it under control. Well somehow the police were called. It was either neighbors or some kids left and got pulled over and spilled the beans on where they had been. I can't remember what the story was or if I ever found out for sure. I was sitting at a picnic table in the garage with a couple of friends drinking my beer and just having a good time. Well I looked to my right and saw two county cops walking in through the front of the garage. I took that as a sign that the party was over. I sat down my beer nudged my friends. The four of us got up and just walked out the back door of the garage. As soon as we were out the back door we blocked it for the woods. We had walked to the party from my other friend's house who lived probably a mile away around the corner. Well we weren't about to just go walking down the road to get back. So we ended up taking this huge roundabout way back to my friend's house. As we were going we ended up picking up other refugees from the party that were looking for safety. Like Moses leading the Jews from Egypt we led all of the stragglers back to my friend's house, I think probably 10 to 15 total. Since we still had a decent sized group and the night was young we just picked the party back up. All in all it worked out pretty well. I was 18 and drunk. Being stupid, I had a red cup out in public, and I'm yelling at these women in an apartment complex. They were laughing, so I thought they were into me. I see a cop on foot approaching, so I put down my cup and change the tone in my voice to make it seem like it's all casual. Cop approaches me, asked for my ID, I tell him I don't have any, and he grabs me as says you're coming with me. I physically remove his hands off me by batting them away, and say get off me man. He says you just hit a cop, you're under arrest. Before he could finish the sentence I Usain Bolt out of there. I think he's right on my ass, so I try to pick up speed. I look behind me, and he's way behind huffing and puffing on his radio. I realize he's a fat, out of shape, cop and there's no chance he'll catch me. I turn a corner, and see flashlights in the distance. I assume it's more cops, so I run opposite that direction. In an even stupider decision, I hide in some bushes and wait for two females to get out of their car. I jump out at them and say cops are after me, act like you know me and walk with me. They are terrified but agree. I try and make drunk, small talk but it's not popping. I get paranoid and just enter a building. I call my bro and by coincidence I'm in the building right by his. I'm waiting for him and these hippies invite me up to their room as I wait. My bro comes into me smoking with them. He brings me to his place and he's been making fun of me about this ever since. That was about 15 years ago. One time me and a friend were breaking into a school for fun. Short end of it is we ended up tripping and alarm and hightailing it out of the building. Only to be greeted by a security company car right next to the exit. We booked it across the schoolyard around 2am and I yelled to my friend that we should split up because there's only one car. My friend broke off and I jumped onto a huge garbage box with a rubber lid that gave me some spring in my junk and I vaulted over the fence. I started running down the street, security car in pursuit, 
Fortunately I was a track and field champ so running was no problem. The real limiting factor here was the fact that I decided to wear flip flops that night. So I was burning cheap rubber down the road clip clop clip clop clip clop security goons hot on my heels. My stamina was draining fast and I could feel my wanted star steadily increasing. So I needed an escape. As soon as I reached a dark patch on the road, street lights obscured by trees I sharply pivoted 90 degrees and leapt into the nearest driveway. I skittered over to a metal trash can and dropped a knee and waited with bated breath for my pursuer's next move. I heard the 2000s model Ford crawl by, searchlight rolling over my hiding spot, beads of sweat dropping to the gravel under my feet. The spotlight moved on and I knew I was safe for now. The Goomba started going into search mode, methodically combing the streets to try and smoke me and my friend. Through a series of crouches, dashes and awkward rolls I navigated the grid of backyard suburbias and eventually found my way into my friend's backyard and collapsed on his deck chair. I waited in his backyard for hours, hoping he hadn't been snagged, when suddenly I heard a rustling in the bushes that lined his backyard. His head popped out, eyes wide covered in scratches hair disheveled. We stared into each other's eyes and simultaneously uttered dude. Two buddies of mine decided to start stripping while we were out longboarding around the neighborhood. I decide to stick around to make sure these goofballs don't do anything too stupid. Their nakedness offended a local resident who yelled at us that he was calling the cops, to which my friends respond with helicopter motions. I tried explaining that they were being dumb and we'll be on our way. Guy says to late and that he saw me too. Fuck I think to myself and proceed with my friends down the block to retrieve their clothes. Upon dressing one realizes they must have left their wallet back near the area they were streaking in. So we go back to get it. I mean they had clothes on now so what can these people say? Bad idea. Cops in Texas do not like teenagers who skate around naked. Initially two squad cars pull around the corner hearing our way. We hide behind a couple trucks in some bodice driveway and pretty much hold our breaths as they pass by shining their lights around the bushes and whatnot. Another arrives and that's when I decide fuck this. I make a quick game plan, say run to the brothers, then proceed to haul as. I dashed across the street, ran track in middle slash high school, and looked around as I approached the fence I was about to clear, when I noticed they were still frozen back in that driveway. I think to myself they'll understand and continue to hurdle the fence and weave through the woods which connected to my own subdivision. I felt like I was Jason Byrne the rest of the night. I bear crawled through ditches, hid from cars, and even turned my phone off. My friends got caught immediately after I left them and got fined $75 each. They were slightly upset about me ditching them, even though I myself stayed clothed. They got over it and it remained a funny story for years. This is my dad's story. He's got a lot but this is my favorite. He gets into a car accident. No one is hurt, but it's before cell phones. So he tells the lady to go inside the restaurant off the side of the road and call the police. He pushes her car into the parking lot, decides he doesn't want to deal with this, and uses the bent over fence behind the restaurant as a ramp to the road behind the restaurant and gets away. Well a waitress in the restaurant recognized him and told the police who he was, so they showed up at his house the next day. He had figured someone would see him, so he went and left his car at work, our family business, and took the project car he had been working on home. So the police show up, accuse him of leaving the scene, and he stays calm. Do you have any proof it was me? Well sir a woman in the restaurant believes she went to high school with you, so you came here, woke me up, to accuse me of a crime you have no evidence for, because some lady thought she recognized me? Yes get off of my porch, and he shut the door. Hearing the woman screaming, and pretty much having a meltdown, he figured they may come back, so he kept his other car on him for a few weeks. They did come back. He showed them he had a completely different car than they described, and then threatened to sue the department for harassment. They never bothered him again. The best part is how this ends years later. A couple years after the accident, my dad was driving around in the car he got into the accident with, and some car is following him. He makes a couple rights to make sure, then he pulls over, and gets out to confront this guy. 
Well first he sees a giant man. Over 6 feet. We are a tiny family. Get out of the driver's side. And then the lady from the accident get out of the passenger side. She starts jumping up and down losing her mind screaming that's him that's him. And he drove off. And never saw her again. More recently. We had a party for the holidays this year. The lady from the restaurant. Did in fact go to school with him. She was over last week. She still doesn't know it was actually him. Two women in the suburbs doing burnouts in a stolen car. Friend was driving. Cops came around the corner towards us with lights on. We floored it past them, and they reversed after us. We went right at the corner, and down a decently long main street. Cops were far enough behind us, that I started yelling stop, let's get out and run. Instead he took the next left and hit the corner with the left front, blew the tire. I had my door open ready to bail and remember a ton of sparks as the rim was skidding on the road with the tire half peeled off. Cops were gaining. I was still yelling for him to stop as now we were around the corner we were out of view of the cops. He went to take the next corner, a right, but instead of turning, we skidded into an empty lot which had a huge mound of dirt in the middle, up the gutter, and into the lot, cops coming around the corner behind us. We had slowed enough that I hit the ground running, my friend also bailed on the other side. I didn't look behind, just lights and noise everywhere around me, across the street, and started running through yards and jumping fences. One of them had a massive faking dog that started chasing me as ran past it and made me sheet myself even more. I ran through 5 or 6 houses and then stopped in the dark in some bushes and just chilled for an hour or so listening and watching lights in the near distance. We were in our home suburb so once it all quieted down I headed home, skipped a couple more fences so I didn't come in the front way. Cop car was out the front of my house. Lights on fac, busted. I waited until it left, and then went in the back door, my old man had tied on one, and was sprawled naked on his bed with some chick. He never even heard the cops knocking apparently. Went to bed. When I got up I was stressing like mad, told my dad what had happened, went to the cop shop, and handed myself in. My mate had bailed from the car, and gone to ground on the big pile of dirt, the cops went either side of him, and got him in the middle. He dobbed me in, done. Caught. Slap on the wrist. Don't do that again. We did it again. A lot. Took some jail time to sort me out. Got away from the cops a few times. Hid in a tree in park on two different occasions. Ran through some warehouse industrial areas on others. Was in a couple of car chases. Got caught for a lot of it in the end. Would have been 50 over 50 on got caught got away with. Not really outrun. More like not detected at all. I was at an apartment party that was on the lowest level, so the patio allowed you to just walk out, my friend heard a knock on the door, not even a loud knock, and went to look through the peephole I watched him do it and nobody else noticed, but I saw him look through, walk over and grabbed his backpack, and I got up, and started following him out the back patio door, as soon as we get outside I said cops, he just nods and we keep walking, we get to the front of the building, to get back to my car and see a cop car right by the exit to the parking lot. The way the complex was set up, there were two buildings facing away from each other with a strip of grass in between then. Inside the car was still an officer who didn't see us, yet because it's 1am and we are both black, we see him start to get out of his car and we sat our backpacks down behind a bush right next to someone else's patio, both backpacks filled with weed and alcohol sit down at the random patio and light up cigarettes and pretended like we are just having late night smoke and we live there. Cop walks past and we wait until he gets to the party and then pick up our backpacks and drive home. We later found out the police cornered the people in the party from both exits and cited everyone inside. It was easy for them because it was like 25 people maximum. I don't know if this counts as out running the cops, but it's pretty damn close. A few hometown friends and I were trying to have one last get together before we all went back off to college. There was Snoop the Pothead, Carlito the Asian, Babyface the typical suburb white guy, and Ed the Knot, so suburb white guy, were looking for a place to crash when I get the bright idea to rent a hotel room for the night. We all agree, buy the hotel room, and proceed to get really drunk. Well, Snoop though it would be awesome to bring a man soft what into the hotel room while we were being drunk and loud at 2am. 
he starts rolling a couple blunts and their ice what's sitting out in the open. Everyone except Ed and I go out to smoke while we are watching Step Brothers. After they get back in we make up some drinking game and start playing. Then we hear some loud knocks at the door. We all run to the back if the hotel room and hide in the bathroom because we are all scared shirtless right now. We wait a few minutes for whoever it is to leave then we go back to watching Step Brothers 15 minutes later we hear another set if knocks followed by the bone shattering phrase podunk town police open up. We are faked. We don't know what to do. We can't open up because there's an ounce of weed and that will get us all seriously faked. The way these hotel rooms were designed is that they had two doors. One to the outside and one to the hallway. We don't open up for the cops and just decide to wait it out. I decide to go out into the hallway and try to walk around and see if the cops are still there. I couldn't figure out a way around so I just decide to stop at the vending machine and get some snacks. I get my snacks and as I'm walking back to the room I hear that telltale sign of radio crackle and the jingle of keys. I know I'm faked. Hey. Are you one of the people in room? I'm visibly intoxicated so I just come clean. Honesty is the best policy right? Tell him where we are and give him my ID and info. He asks me to get all of my friends out of the room and into the hallway. I'm seriously freaking out because of feud. They open up where Snoop and Babaface are nowhere to be found. Feud is gone. It's just me, Carlito, and Ed I'm the room making up some story about how it was just us and our other friends had left an hour or two ago. He takes down all our info, sheets on us for not having any girls over to hang out, and tells us he has bigger sheet to deal with. Somehow, Snoop and Babaface took feud and ran around to the back of the hotel and took off for the woods near an industrial park. Never again will we rent a hotel room. Was playing a game we called Commando with a large group, 30 plus people, and my friend and I were hiding in some bushes while one of the cars with a spotlight was driving by, not cops, other kids playing Commando. They finally moved on, but we waited for a while to make sure, and that's when the cops showed up. We realized the owners of the property must have called them, and before I could even think my friend was running off, and I just followed not really thinking of what would have happened if they caught up with us. They didn't actually chase us very far, but we ran until we had reached our destination for commando. Most of the cops in the area knew about the commando game all the high school kids played, so I don't think they cared all that much. I'd wager it was just a patrol really close got a call about us on the property and showed up just to mess with us and show that they tried to catch us. We'd actually talked with them on different nights while playing and they had recommended routes for us to run to that would keep us out of people's property for the most part. Also if commando sounds too vague or weird I can explain what it is. If anyone's interested it's basically just one group going from point A to point B on foot. Then there's another group in cars that drives to point B and then drives back and people in cars drive by and hop out and try to tag the other players. It was super fun, but I realize, if I didn't live in such a safe town it would probably be very dangerous to play. There is a skate park in my town. When I was younger we would always go there with my friends on our BMX bikes. Problem is the park doesn't allow BMX bikes inside the skate park it started off as the cops would just pull up, get on the bullhorn, and tell us to leave and we did. Soon enough they started giving tickets out for trespassing and no helmets and thats when we decided it's a good idea to just start running away. So we played a weekly game every Friday night to run from the police whenever they showed up. It got really bad at some points because there would be 30 bikers all around the park most of us not even doing anything but hanging out and then have 30 kids on bikes scatter. The police started to up their game and actively try to catch us. I'm talking about undercover agents in the park, strategically positioned officers at the exits, they would roll three cop cars through the grass of the park to chase us. It was hilarious, because there was a block wall around 5 feet tall to a parking lot next door, that was a lot of noobers getaway point, but our city's cop cars had an antenna that stuck up past the wall so, when they were getting all the agents positioned it was a dead giveaway they were about to raid the park. They were not joking, arrests were made, charged for trespassing and evading the police. I personally lucked out every time and never got caught. 
when they start chasing us through the park about one halfway to the rear exit I would double back and head back towards the skate park in the front, throw my bike in the bushes, and blend in with the skaters police always tried to stay on the large group of kids instead of just one kid pedaling his is off. Alright, I've evaded police multiple times, also been arrested twice. Are we talking about on foot or car? Cause I've done both. On foot, it was 1997-ish, and I was a teenager. Tornado struck the community and caused major damage. Curfews and Mars Hall law were enforced. Most families, including my own, rented hotels with power as our entire town was without power. I decided to throw a party on my parents' dark empty house. Had probably 20 friends over, and at the end of the night the 8 or so that were left decided to walk to Waffle House. Half mile away at 2 a.m. We are drunk and just having fun walking around the empty streets when we see a roadblock between us and the road to get to Waffle House. We are all drunk, out past curfew and underage. I our infinite wisdom we decide to go down the road a ways and book it across. Bad idea. One of the cops saw us and within minutes there are lights and sirens trained on us and we all jet in different directions with the plan to meet at Waffle House. I make it into the neighborhood on the Waffle House side, cut through some backyards and I'm there. So I'm walking along, and every minute or so a patrol car would come by and shine its lights, and I'd have to jump into the 8 foot ditch next to the curb. It was literally like a scene from a movie, where I'm literally feet from the officer shining his light, I can hear his radio. After repeating this process about 3 times, and 45 minutes later, each time I jumped in the ditch I'd be stuck there for about 5 minutes at a time. I make it to the backyard I need to cut through, to make it to WH. I that night was magical. It was like living in a post-apocalyptic world for a few days. You could really see the stars and there was no one around. Trees had collapsed houses, and lay in the road. Surreal. By this point I was shirtless as it was a bright white and really gave me away, I was jumping fences and I finally made it to the last fence, which I never realized, that climbing it puts me on the edge of a cliff overlooking the waffle house about 150 feet below me, and then I see the cops, easily 12 patrol cars parked outside, between me and the waffle house which they apparently set up as a makeshift headquarters. I carefully climb down the edge of the cliff and slowly sneak around the cops to lime in the Waffle House parking lot, where I see my best friend sitting in a boat by himself. I join him, and learn that we were the only two to not getting arrested. I tell him my epic tale about my adventure, to which he responds really. I just walk down the street like normal and no one messed with me. The cops ended up visiting me the next day cause one of my ex-friends snitched. The police came to my house and interrogated me but nothing happened, cause I'm not a snitch. Evading the police in a car. I posted about this back when it happened, but essentially I was driving along at night and a police officer on the side on the road turned on his sirens. I was going pretty fast and there was nowhere to pull over, so I pull over in the first shopping center I can find. I find a parking spot and wait for the cop to get here. Instead. He speeds past me with the lights on, and I think to myself oh, well maybe it wasn't for me, nope, it was for me, I see him speed past the other way and I realize that he's lost me, well at this point I'm not about to flag him down, so I decide to wait, he passes again, and after a few minutes I figure he must have given up looking for me, and I head home, as if nothing ever happened. I had a buddy that was doing like twice the speed limit. Our town is notorious for speed traps, and this road had a 25 miles per hour speed limit despite being an empty but wide back road. Anyway, he flies past a cop and sees his brake lights come on. He floors it over the hill and out of sight from the cop, probably doing 90 at this point. He happened to be near a campus he used to work at, so he knows the area well. It was like something out of a movie, he pulls in between two tractor trailers, turns the car off, watches the cop fly past him, turns on his car and drives out the way he came in. And since this will probably never been seen by anyone, that dude died of cancer a few years ago. While I don't think he's a hero or anything, by going so fast through a 25 miles per hour zone to evade police, he was a great friend and truly amazing human being. I miss him so much. I often fantasize he faked his death 
to cease his obligatory kindness to people from our shitty town, but is just living it up on the DL somewhere. Moving from town to town, just being awesome, and keeping a low profile, and one day he'll call me, and say how have you been? God damn it I miss that guy. I had heard he was sick, and wanted to go see him, but his roomie said he was on the mend, and would be out of the hospital in a few weeks. After he got home, out of nowhere things got worse, and he didn't have health insurance. I never got to say bye. I had moved out of town a few years before, and we didn't keep in touch much, but I would have loved to just been able to say to him. Our friendship probably didn't mean as much to you as it did to me, but that's okay. I was always amazed by your spirit, sometimes I'd just dissolve in the background, and be in awe of your presence. Hanging out with you is what I imagine hanging with Ferris Bula would have been like. Everybody does things they regret, and you probably had more regrets than most, but I consider you my brother, no matter what. I love you. If you feel that you betrayed me somehow, I guarantee you didn't. I considered your time a gift, and I'm eternally grateful to have been a witness of some of it. Not the cops, but I was with some friends, rode past a sketchy parking lot with two cars parked driver's window to driver's window. My buddy yells drug deal. We laugh but seconds later one of the car speeds past us, throws the e-brake, and blocks the road. My buddy reverses down the road to the nearest intersection, spins around, and takes off with the car right on our tail. We proceed to speed all over town with the other car continuously trying to wreck us, pass us in the wrong lane, and don't see a single cop. They end up passing us, and blocking the road again, this time getting out of the car with baseball bats and crowbars. We wait until they get near the car, reverse, and speed away. We found a nearby parking lot, pull in, cut the lights off, and wait. A few minutes pass, and we feel like we're in the clear, but then out of nowhere the car comes hauling absolute balls into the parking lot straight at us. Once again we go driving all over town, and decide the best way to lose them is the interstate. While going up the on-ramp they pass us, and block the road again. We reverse down the ramp, dodging cars the whole way, and get on going the other direction. Somehow we lost them. It was awesome. Here's a story of how I didn't outrun the cop. Headed over to a friend's house, after we were partying elsewhere. I'm buzzed or drunk. My drunk friends are all riding with one of them, that has a new car, a real nice WRX. I decide I'd like to see this thing in action. Because I drive an older 93 Impreza, and a WRX or similar is my dream car. Side note, I now drive a 2001 Rupees 2.5 which I love. I'm pulled over and sure enough, friend with a car full of idiots goes flying by on this lonely back road doing about 75 and a 35 miles per hour stretch. I ride the throttle as hard as I can to try and catch up, doing maybe 55 or so by the time I pass the cop on the side of the road. I realize that he's going to be hot on the tail of my friend in a second, so I pass him still going a pretty solid 48 or so, the lights go up, and I pull over a little further down the road, took me a bit to slow down and or realize I was in deep sheet. I'm pulled over, and the cop just flies by me chasing the other car. Disaster, but at least I'm probably getting away. I wait a moment, until he's out of sight, and then come to the realization that to get to my friend's house I'm going to have to follow the cop. HMM. I make the poor decision, thinking surely he's got my friend pulled over, and is having a good old time handcuffing him, they were all drunk too, and calling back up to deal with all the drunk passengers. I was wrong. I come up on the cop, who is pulled over at a four way turn off, the turn off to my friend's house of course trying to figure out which way they went. I drive by sheepishly, at a gentle 25 or so. I go the wrong way, figuring I had better not give it away and maybe I should wait this out somewhere else. He blips his siren and lights and follows me. At this point I'm totally screwed I figure. I just answer all his questions as honestly as I can. I give my best, that I don't know who was driving that car, that it might be someone I know, but that the population of our area here isn't super huge so that's no surprise. You had anything to drink tonight? Yeah, and I'm an idiot for driving at all. I probably had enough, to not be safe to drive. Am I in trouble? You live right around here? Like down one of these roads. 
No, sir, just going to visit a friend who was close by, so I can sleep there, before I go home tomorrow morning. HMM. Well, is it in walking distance? Yes sir, just a bit down the road here. You had better walk than to be safe. Don't let me catch you driving again, or I'll have to take you in for drunk driving. Holy crap I got let go. I wait a good 20 minutes, before I'm quite sure he's gone. Then I turn around, take the correct turn to my friend's house, and when I get there they have no idea all that went down. They saw the cop, blasted their way out of there at top speed, and prayed he couldn't catch them before the turn off. They lucked out he hadn't seen which turn they took. They were genuinely blown away that I got off without so much as a ticket. Anyway, that incident and a few others led to me no longer drinking at all. I'm lucky I never hurt anyone or myself. Don't drink and drive, ever, folks. So to answer the original question, to outrun cops, you gotta get lucky, and you gotta force the cop to have to make a choice of different turns without knowing where you went. Or, just maybe, be the guy who the cop isn't really after. I have no idea how you evade multiple cruises though, good luck with that. Was at my first college party, 17 years old. My brother, 3 years older than I, took me to a huge 200 plus person house party, the size of which would 100% attract police to break it up, and was a surefire way to lose their lease, multiple citations and you're out sort of thing, 5, $10 sign at the entrance. Don't remember, not much, pretty damn big, bartender, just someone mixing sheet, with a fully loaded bar and small menu comprising over 100 or so bottles of liquor, 3 to 4 kegs, 2 beer pong tables, DJ with disco lights and fog, the works. Sure enough, at a certain point someone turns the lights on and yells cops, everyone shuts up and looks around confused. Guess it isn't that big of a deal. Cops will just make everyone leave. Me, being a paranoid minor, got really worried that I'd even have to call my mom if caught by the police. That'd be rough. But, I tried to keep my cool and follow my brother's lead, who was also quite drunk. We get outside, and there's just an incredible amount of cops. Even a faking helicopter. I know, you probably don't believe me that they brought the chopper just for a college party, but they did. Arizona police, for ya. Probably at least 10 cop cars around the house, and more keep coming. We walked out the backyard in the sea of drunk college kids getting their schwasty plans ruined, some stealing bottles when they can, most not daring getting busted by the cops, if under 21. As we cross the street, a car pulls up right in front of us, I go to the right, brother to the left and we were separated. Then another car comes up, and we get more divided. He goes into an alley, and I go on the other side of the building. If I turned, I thought I would have to face these cops KN, and that if they question me, I will be having to call and explain everything to my mom, along with getting some slap on the wrist charge from the police. I keep going, and more police pull up behind me, and the mob of people I'm around. As soon as I'm around the building, and out of sight of all police, brother as well, I sprinted to the fence, jumped into an alley, and started running. Eventually I found another group of people also running. Then, boom. Spotlight. Helicopter is moving towards us with everyone scattering. I'm scared sheetless, but every once in a while I smiled, cause it was just faking alcohol. Split from the group, and hid back behind a tree, while they ran out, with the spotlight. I took a different road, and hid at a gas station under a truck for a while till I could call my brother. A cop pulls up to the gas station, looks under the only other car in the lot, around the pumps, gets in his car and leaves. I go and hide in a drainage tunnel till I could get a hold of my brother, then found a quiet way home. Awesome story as soon as it finished, but damn it was not fun to go through. And yes, I know helicopters for a party with alcohol is excessive, totally agree, but it happened. I have managed to escape the police it was me and three friends who hijacked a car with it. We went to the Swedish island Jun we had a lot of cops after us including the police helicopter and several police cars we used the car broke down and we fled on foot. First we went onto a party where we were not welcome. To hide there was trouble and we had to take us away. 
Police had cordoned off the bridge to the island, so we could not take us away from the island we had no good tool, and failed to steal another car suddenly appeared a dog patrolled up, and they let the dog on us the dog ran straight to me, and my friends ran in the other direction. I jumped over a low fence just off a wall and just then the dog up. I stood still with the dog just on the other side of the fence dog thought he had me. I did not know what I would do as I praised the dog and said he was talented. Then I pointed to my one friend who had come a long distance away and yelled to the dog to take him the dog looked a little questionable to me since he ran away at full speed for my friend. I took the opportunity and ran as fast as I could until I came to a garage that was open and there was a boat up and down it was newly painted. I crawled under the boat and lay still. I heard the dog coming back and how it went around the boat. Then I heard the police call on the dog and it was quiet. I was under the boat for about an hour. Then I knocked on the house and a lady opened. I said I came from my friends and asked if I could come in and warm myself this was the middle of winter and it was snowing and freezing cold lady let me in and let me sleep in her basement on a couch the day after I took the bus home only to find out that his friend which I identify as the dog ran after him had announced my name. I was wanted so you could say that I both managed to get away and I got caught at the same time. Broke into an abandoned corner store with a friend, because we were bored, junior high. Two girls were eating lunch with us, seemed cool. After 15 minutes of screwing around with the back door we were in. We looked around for a bit, looked back down the hall, and see two big guys staring at us, they'd just come through the back. We ran to the front, it was locked. We fought with it as the guys barreled toward us, literally, and I mean literally just getting it open as a hand grabbed onto my coat. I slipped out of his grasp, we ran past the girls, pointed down one street, yelled that's the way we went and took off another way. We ran like sheet after Taco Bell. I guess the cops were having a slow day, two patrol cars came tearing down the road and the thump of a helicopter was closing in maybe a mile away. We made it to a wooded mini park as the cars came around the corner and cut through till we made it to my friend's apartment building. Went through as many locked doors as we could till we hit the basement. Hid out there until it felt safe. Few hours and then I went on home the cops called me. When I got there, I'd left my backpack at the scene. Upshot is I ended up dating one of the girls for years. Downside is she ended up being psychotically jealous and we broke up high school, it was lunch break on a game day, football, so a bunch of us players left campus for lunch. A different kid on the team, we'll call him Steve, had just gotten his first car, which was really his mom's flaming purple Ford Explorer. I mean, you could see this thing from low earth orbit. So anyway, there's this big hill, and the restaurant we were at was up top the hill, the turn to get back to school, was at the bottom. Two lanes in each direction, plus a suicide lane in the middle. Pretty wide road, and not many cars. So Steve, who's just thrilled after to be actually in control of a vehicle, floors it down this hill. Probably going like 65 and a 35. Not retardedly fast or even unsafe for the conditions, but fast enough to attract the attention from a local smokey who was turning into this thoroughfare from an adjoining side street. Roof lights and sirens. He flips around to come after us. We had the speed advantage since he was chugging up a hill and we were flying down it. Without even thinking, Steve goes god it, they always target the gay colored cars, flips a beach across the suicide lane, and hauls us down the same side street the cop had just turned out of. The speed limit dropped even further here, I think, to maybe 25, but Steve is just flying past little picket fence houses and running stop signs, and eventually drives down a utility easement, not sure how many places still have those, and comes out about half a mile away, and heads back to school. Before people ask, yes this was 100% in the Midwest. It was winter, and I was on my way home from a let's call it shopping trip I had been in the Netherlands, and was a few miles from the German border. Eventually I noticed a passard with German plates and two passenger in my rears. In Germany that's what unmarked cop car looks like, mid-level German make, and two people in it. I really really didn't want to be stopped, and I knew that, as long as we were in the Netherlands they wouldn't stop me. I also was in my mother's car, a Towerag 4.2 TDI. 
too important thing about it, it all led us and its winter tires were rated for 149 miles per hour, 2 miles per hour under its top speed. I wasn't sure about the Passat's top speed or its winter tires, expected both to be 130, but I definitely knew that my acceleration would be faster. So I punched it a few miles before the border. They did the same. I quickly made distance, and when they turned on their lights I was far enough away to be able to lie and say that I never saw them. I didn't slow down for two exits before I left the autobahn and drove overland to a parallel running one. I was 15 and my buddy and I decided it would be smart to smoke out wet in the slide in that playground of the elementary school 15 minutes from a house, since it was windy. We start smoking and laughing, and having a good time, when we see a light across the field start moving. We don't think much about it and keep smoking. A few seconds later this light is coming right towards us a little faster, so we decide to get out of the slide and leave. Hey stop. We hear from the direction of the light. That's when we decide to book it. I ran towards a fence, and attempted to hurdle it, and fell flat on my face into a bush. I stayed there, while my buddy continued into the neighborhood. After about 5 minutes of hiding I see several cop cars pull up to the school. Apparently there was a break in and someone had vandalized a bunch of stuff at the school, hence someone had been at the school checking it out already. I stayed in the bush for about half an hour and slowly the cops start to leave. I wait a bit longer, and decide the coast is clear, and walk back home. Get home and there's a cop car in my driveway with my buddy sitting in the back seat. TLDR, smoked in a middle school parking lot, face planted into a bush, and decided to hide. Went home only to discover my buddy and already been caught, and his parents had told the cops who he was with. I've successfully ran away from the boys twice. First time I was 18. My friend was short on his rent money and had just collected his last paycheck from the job he had most recently been fired from. At this point, I had been selling crack since I was 16, but no longer wanted to take the risk of getting robbed, killed or getting caught as an adult. Anyway, he asked if I would get him a ball, one eighth of an ounce, from my plug. Normally, I would never go for such a small amount, so late at night, but my friend was in a tight spot. Now, my buddy never really hustled like that before, but desperate times call for desperate measures. I go get what he asks for, and meet up with him. It's about 1am and we are in the neighborhood we used to live in too, so he can flip a dope. When I meet back up with this dude, he is on the phone arguing with his girl. I give him the sheet, but is barely paying attention to what I'm saying. He's asking me if we should break it into smaller chunks. I tell him no, for what? We have no scale, and if anything does go wrong, he can claim personal use if it's not cut into a bunch of ready to sell rocks. Yeah, so has barely listening. As we are walking up a side street to hit the main strip, I watch a guy on a bike ride past for the third or fourth time. He looks like a crackhead, but I have never seen him before. He didn't seem right. So the guy on the bike approaches us and asks we got anything. My friend, still on his phone arguing with his girl, tells him to walk down a side street. It didn't feel right, but my oblivious friend is not paying attention to what I'm trying to tell him on the sly. Then I watch it happen so fast. My friend's back is turned to the main street, phone between his shoulder and ear still arguing, and he's trying to bite off a small chunk of dope off the bigger rock. I see a what appears to be a gold Toyota fly up the main street and make a quick turn onto the street we are on. I yell vice. The dude posing as a crackhead dumps his bike and runs up the main street. I turn around and run down the side street, cutting between houses and over fences. Before I turned and ran, all I could see is the utter confusion on my friend's face, unaware of the cops jumping out the car behind him while me and the other dude scatter. My hair is long and in a ponytail, so after I cut across about 5 side streets through random yards, I stopped and caught my breath in my friend, who was getting arrested parents old backyard, lol. I watched a couple black and white patrol cars circle around looking for me from the cracks in the fence. I took off the jacket I had on and pulled the hair tie out of my hair. After about 30 minutes, I felt it was safe enough to leave. Walking home, a couple cops passed by but didn't bother me at all. My friend ended up with his first felony conviction for possession.
the cops asked him who the girl was, and his reply of course, yeah, nor, I just meet that beach. For the record, I'm a guy, but they only seen my long hair as I was sprinting away. Two key things that allowed me to get away. 1. My idiot friend getting caught and giving me time to get a head start, and 2. I started cutting through backyards halfway down the street. This made any cops looking for me have to look from their cars. They would have to come down the street to look in the middle of the block. I can cut across two blocks through backyards faster than they can drive down one block in a car, and then I can turn around and go back through the yards and be 10 blocks in the opposite direction of where they are looking. I don't feel like like typing out the other time right now. Maybe later. 16 years ago I went to high school and found out we had a physics test final period I had not studied for. Needed to get out as soon as possible, so I found my buddy that lived behind the school and figured we would just jump in his car and split for the day. Yay, that didn't happen. It started when we got off school grounds and he says his stepmom was at home and we couldn't get his car. Okay, not the best start. We had an older friend slash dealer that lived about a mile from school. As we started walking we decided to ditch our backpacks and come back for them later. The plan if we saw cops was simple act cool and pretend like we were in college. And that didn't happen. As soon as a cop drives by my buddy takes off running. So I say fuck it and run the other direction. I got lucky and the cop chased after him. I'm running through backyards and woods. At one point I dart through some construction guys working on a backyard pool. I decide the roads are a bad idea and stick to wood slash backyards for the next one half mile to my friend's house. Now I live in a very small town I know the cops are gonna be out looking for me. This is all there is for them to do. As I'm running, all I see are lights of cop cars anytime I get close to a road. Oh yay, I also have bright pink hair, so I'm not exactly camouflaged. At one point a cop should have seen me dead on, but I hid behind a tree as soon as I spotted him. He must have been looking in a different direction when I saw him and kept driving. The last street to cross before my buddy's place was the main street in town. Like three cop cars drove by with their lights on before I crossed. I had made it away from the cops at least. The rest of this story is kinda funny. Safe at my friend's house, I quickly discover he is at work. They leave the door open, so I was able to go inside and call him from his room. He tells me where his stash is, so I smoke to take the edge off. He also lets me know that his mom, a guidance counselor at the school, will be home soon for lunch. About an hour later a friend at school calls buddy's room line. This story is pre-cell phone and lets me know the cops caught my cutting accomplice. That Morin told the cops he needed to get his backpack and they obviously found mine right next to it. They knew who I was and had called my parents along with going through my backpack. Now this was bad. I was super high and the school day wasn't even over yet. If I went back, I'd still have to take the test. But I was dead to faking rights, and not calling my parents for hours would have made everything worse. After my friend's mom came home for lunch and I hid in the closet, I decided I should just man up and call my father. Now my father is a truly awful person. He is a nasty son of a bitch, strict as all hell, and had recently divorced my mother. When I called him, all he asked was where are you, and I gave him the address. I told him I called him instead of my mother, which may have softened the blow. He says he'd be right there. So dad rolls up, and I jump in the car and he's actually laughing. He says the cops told him they called in units from three other towns to look for me. That actually explains why so many cop cars were coming down the main road, right before I crossed the final street to buddy's home. He called the school to tell them he had me, and we have to go in and talk to the disciplinary teacher. Dad says he's going to yell at me and for me to keep a straight face, but that he wasn't actually mad. So we get into school, and oh yay, I'm baked. Dad fake yelling at me is hysterical, but I somehow keep it together. After some more yelling, I get my backpack, and I'm told to get to class. It is now one period before my test. Boned. That period is health class, and we are watching a movie that day, when I show up. I tell the teacher I got caught cutting and ask if I can have lunch, cause munches. She says okay, and I sit in the back of class. 
I crack open a can of soda so loud everyone turns around to look at me. Hilarious. I accept my fate and fail the physics test next period. When my mom got home she congratulated me on outrunning the cops. I'm a notoriously slow runner, but had been working with a trainer for football and she commented on how that must be working. I got one Saturday detention, and no truancy charges. Cops never said anything to me. I'm the best man for my dealer buddy in a few months. I didn't run from them or anything. To be honest I didn't even know they were there. There's a canyon right outside of our apartments. Sure there's people that go down there and break bottles, or whatever. But I have lived in the neighborhood for a while. So I would go down the canyon whenever I wanted to smoke or hang out by myself. Most of the time I would just sit down on the ground and listen to music completely in the dark except for the light of the cigarette. This time, I went down the canyon, but I had pulled up my hoodie because it was cold. So I'm going down, and there's two ways to go. One way leads deeper into the canyon, but before going in deeper, there's something of a wall that acts like a hill. Noon on the street level can't see if you are down there, but they can hear you if you are being loud, and I'm not. The other road takes you into the neighborhood, schools, stores, and such. Everyone that lives in the neighborhood has taken this road sometime in their life to at least go shopping or drop of their kids. So I turn to hang out at the wall where I usually lean against it or sit down by the side of the road. As I'm getting comfortable and putting listening to music, I see a searchlight from the top of the street level shine down the road I was going to go on and then it goes to the other road. I guess it's a cop because noon has a flashlight that bright that I've seen. So he's shining his flashlight trying to see where I am. The thing is, I didn't even know there were cops there, and I wasn't going to go up there to find out what they want. I understand it looked suspicious, but I was not in the mood. I don't want to be bothered, so I continue to do what I'm doing, and I guess the cop gave up, and he sure as hell wasn't going to go down there. I do notice that they shine the light further down the canyon searching for me, but I guess I wasn't worth the trouble. I stay down there for a good hour before heading further in the canyon and make my way up and hang out on the side of a cliff we have there. I then just go up to street level and jump a rail of a mini parking lot and then I'm home. <laughs> Happened twice. Once on my bike and once on foot. Was cruising on the highway express lane doing like 160 slash kilometers CBR 1000 RR at like 2 AM on a weekday. Saw the cherries light up in the collector as I passed an unmarked, and I thought for a such fact, should I pull over, or then I saw in my rear view, that I already pulled a decent gap, and said screw it. Cranked the throttle until the lights were way in the distance, which happened surprisingly quick, and pulled into the collectors at the next exchange, and then immediately pulled off the highway at the next exit. I then begin going the opposite direction I was headed thinking, if he called ahead any backup would be going my original direction. Took side streets back and garaged my bike for a solid week. It was dumb, I was out of control when I used to ride, so I don't anymore. Second story, on foot. We were teenagers, bored and wanting to party, so we broke into a lovely private park area and had a small fire going, booze, music. Nice little time, there were maybe 20 of us. We then see a group of 5 to 6 guys approaching in the dark. Eyebrows raised and then they pop on their flashlights and announce themselves as police. All of us grew up in an area where you had to have some street smarts and hilariously every single person's immediate reaction was to run. I'm sure the cops would have just kicked us out and nothing would have happened. We ran anyway. They gave chase but everyone split up. My dumbers decided to wade across a 20 feet wide but shallow river because of course cops wouldn't want to get their feet wet for me. Turns out I was right and the guy who was chasing in the direction of me and my friend decided to split and go after him. The park was huge. So I just kept running in the direction where I knew it backed onto an area with really nice houses. Made it to a house and hopped the fence and into the street. Walked a bit to a bus stop and caught the first bus heading near my general direction. Turns out all my friends got away as well. I've ran twice. I've got away once, being caught once. The first time was when I was 14. I was with my mates, pretty late, 11pm, 
on a school night, at a building site, drinking and playing music. There were maybe a dozen of us. Two police cars roll up, four police get out, and we all bolt. Unfortunately one of our friends, Stuart, was a fat kid, and was caught pretty quickly by one of the coppers. I've never been particularly fast, I pretty much finished middle of the pack on the school monthly cross country run. But I'm agile. Me and two others were running off in one direction, with this 20 something copper right on our heels, yelling police. Stop. Obviously, we didn't. We were coming to the end of the building site, my two mates jumped over the fence into the street, I cut left, and jumped onto the unfinished veranda they were building, and into the house. The police officer didn't see this. I basically hung out there, until the officer came back, with one of my mates, and they all left, I think they got 5 or 6 of us, and cleared us off the site. None of them sold any of us out, so that was nice. The other time, I was quite a bit older, 19, a fight broke out at a rave I was at, an illegal one, and the police were called, never found out which faking dipshit called the police to an underground rave, and we all bolted. Some 2000 people all clearing out. I was unlucky, as I was running, I went right past a police car. I hope they didn't see me, they did. They turned, blue lighted, and caught me. Let me go, as they couldn't prove I was there, but it was pretty sheet being held for 4 hours in a cell on a Saturday. Thanksgiving day a few years my brother and a friend of mine, and I go to watch a movie Aka smoke somewhat in my car. Finally we find this small baseball park with multiple fields. The setting is important here. So if you turn into the area, you drive down a hill, past two fields. One field is slightly higher than the other, with an area to drive between. So as we are parked, a diamond is below us, and one above us, the one above us concealing us from the road. It's late, definitely nobody else there. We toke, just listening to music, when we see a car drive past the road in our rear view. Meow we didn't know it was a cop, but we see the brake lights, so we start driving forward. As we turn right to what we thought was another exit, we realize it just dead ends into a small soccer field. I panic and just keep going, drive through the field, come upon the main road we were all off of, and Dukes of Hazard style fishtail my mom's nurse and onto the road. Take off quickly, book it through the parking lot of this nearby church, almost nailing one of the concrete parking things at the front of spaces. Get back to another main road and run the stop sign dangerously, to cut off like 6 to 7 cars. We are meow just driving normal speed hoping to go unnoticed, but that cop was on us damn near instantly. Clearly passed the other cars, and was keying on us. Blue lights us, and we pull over. Before I even look at my friend and my brother there's one car meow facing us, the one who pulled us behind, and a car on the shoulder next to us point wet in the car, freaking out. Guy comes up, and asks us what we are up to, just coming back from the mall, after seeing a movie. Takes my license, walks away, dead silent in car, comes back up a moment later, and says we were looking for a car like this model, sorry for the inconvenience, get home safe, have a good thanksgiving. We drove home in utter silence, and never brought it up again. This is the first time I ever even described the situation. Still proud of my poker face that night. I was 18 or so. Driving along at an excessive rate of speed I passed a local cop going the other direction. It was a straight stretch of road, and in a 35 miles per hour zone. I was going 50 or so. He hit his brakes and lights, I hit the accelerator. The cars in behind me all panicked when he hit his lights, so they delayed him by a few seconds. My girlfriend's house was about 2 miles away with several twists, turns, and hills between here and there, so that was my immediate destination. She lived on a farm and the driveway turned in and doubled back parallel to the road. Typical long dirt and gravel driveway with big circle turn around between the house, garage, and barn. I hit the driveway slowing down from 120 to 15 miles per hour in about 3 feet, because a huge dust storm would be a dead giveaway as to where I went. Her younger brothers, 12 or 13 years old, were playing near the barn as I came screaming in. I yelled for them to close the barn doors as I slid to a stop inside. I bailed out and grabbed a basketball yelling cops on my ass. Two on one you guys against me score 16 to 9 you guys and started shooting baskets. 
Just as the cop turned and flew past on the road with light and sirens blazing. We kept playing for a while and the cop came creeping back up the road, hesitated at the driveway, then went on. I hung out there the rest of the day and most of the night, since I knew he, they, would be watching for my car. Top banana yellow chargers were not real common, so it stood out. I made it by vertical bar vertical bar that much. Finally something I actually have a story for, although I may have gotten here too late. Here it is anyway. Back when I was a jungan, I had a friend who lived near a small doctor's surgery. The building was basically tucked behind the houses down a residential street. The houses back garden fences led right to the surgery car park if you climbed over them. So, being the hardcore, rebellious gangsters we were, we would over engage in a monster game of hide and seek. We would play at night time, which made it especially dangerous. We would hide around near my friend's house and especially around the clinic area. At times, we would climb on top of the building to hide. Evidently, someone in their house must have seen a bunch of people climbing on top of the building and naturally assumed the worst. We were all in the middle of trying to find hiding space when the places suddenly became swarmed with cops. I mean, seriously, it's like they brought a whole fleet. At least 10 vehicles showed up. We all scattered and some of my friends managed to get caught. Me and two more friends dived over the fence to my friend's house and waited in the alleyway between his house. We waited there because car after car still kept coming. When it seemed like the last car had come, we casually walked out of his alleyway and walked back to mine, which was only down the road from my friend's house. We hid in my room until an hour later when I heard a knock on my door. Thinking it was the police, my friends had the idea to jump out my bedroom window and make a run for it, but I answered the door and it was my other friends who got caught. They said they explained to them what was going on and they let them go. Another time, me and my friends were hanging out at a well-known attraction in my town we call the Castle Mound. It's basically the ruins of an old castle from years ago. We would hang out there because we had a great view of the road that passed by, which made it a great location to throw eggs at cars. I know. We were dumb kids who had no other ways to entertain ourselves. Well, as you imagine one would do, someone called the police. I can't remember how it happened, but we were alerted that the police were there. I think my friend noticed and shouted something. Anyway, we make a break for it and just started running into any random direction. It was dark and we couldn't really see where we were going. I noticed a couple of figures running towards us and figured it must be my other friends running away to- I was about to stop and ask them which way the police were when I noticed they were in fact the police. We were running right towards them. We were literally 3 feet away from them. Fortunately for me and two of my friends, my other two friends were ahead of use and there were only two policemen who showed up. They both got nabbed which gave the three of the chance to turn around and get away. I've owned a couple of muscle cars in my life, mostly SRTs. I was that guy in my fairly big group of car friends because I live in an area where everyone and their dog is a Honda fan. In any case, I sold my car due to financial issues and my friend lent me her then fairly new Mazda RX-8. It's a fairly fun car, but no speed demon. I went to a small car meet to see a few friends, and on the drive back, my buddy now riding shotgun, I end up at a red light on a highway with some guy in some pose car. He starts talking smack, but I ignored it, and just said this isn't my car, but then he began saying how I had no balls, because I wasn't in any of my previous muscle cars. I gave in, waited for the green, and mashed it. I was about 3 cars ahead, when I suddenly pass a dark colored truck. From the corner of my eye I noted the array of antennas, the dark rims, and the not so good job of hiding his wee woos, and no more than a second after that, he threw them on, and began to chase us. I looked at my buddy with a serious face, and said I'm faking out. I drove that car, like I was a professional race course driver. I didn't slow down, or look back, until about 5 minutes later. One of my other buddies called me and said if I didn't go back the cop would lock the other kid up. He got caught eventually since he was behind me. I didn't even really know the guy. He just knew about me from my best friend. So I asked my friend if they, my friends, were good. He said yay. So I said towel sheet for him. 
I parked that car and didn't move it for a few days after. The guy got off easy since he had a PBA card and the cop was just bluffing to get me to come back. Never again. Oh god, I actually have one for this I was probably 15 of me, and my sisters were all trespassing on the beach at midnight we were just sitting at picnic tables and being rebellious, when we saw some other people enter the beach during the day, it's a pretty popular beach, because it has a pier with a restaurant on it, we saw the other group of people sneak up onto the pier, and make their way to the end of it if you don't. No, it's illegal to jump off the pier, and doing it is something like a $5,000 fine. Yet, that group thought it was a good idea, and we saw them one by one jump off the edge of the pier and into the ocean, before swimming the one slash four mile back on shore right as they made it back to shore, a quad with two lifeguards pulled out from behind a lifeguard tower and pointed their lights at us, they thought that we were the ones who had done it, they used a megaphone to tell us what we did was illegal, but at that point all of my sisters and I began making a run for it. We saw the police pull up to the beach as we ran down this trail bordering the beach, while the floodlight was pointed away from us for a second, we jumped into this thick pack of bushes, and hid as best we could the quad shot past us, and a couple police officers on foot, came a few minutes later, after about half an hour of hiding, we saw that other group come out of hiding from under the pier and leave so, we scouted the area, and left too didn't ever trespass that beach again. I didn't know. I used to bartend on the strip at a state university. I get out of work at 2am and go to my sport bike. One of the football players starts giving me sheet that I don't know how to ride it. So I plan to prove him wrong. I wait for traffic to clear, then pop a huge wheelie. I rode it to the end of the strip, dropped the front end, and took off home, a few blocks away. I went through two lights, took a sharp left, a quick right, then into an alley go to sleep. Next day in class the football player is telling people in the class we had a story, then he pointed at me, they laughed. After class I went to see what that was all about. He immediately asked me how much the ticket was. What ticket? Wait, you didn't get a ticket? He then told me that the alley that I put my wheelie down at had two cops that took off after me. By the time the front wheel was down, I was going 60, so the cops never came close to me before I turned. I hid that bike in my living room for a few months. Start of this month I needed to buy myself a new car. Took a guy I know with me who knows everything there is to know about buying a second hand car. He also has a motor trader insurance policy in trade plates which would enable him to drive the car. If I purchased it as I wouldn't be insured and the vehicle wouldn't be taxed. I bought the car but he'd forgotten to bring his trade plates with him. He said he'd risk it considering we were only a 20 minute drive from my house and the route was all small country roads out in bumfuck nowhere in the UK, where you never see a police car. Well, halfway back we pass a police car sitting at a junction, him following him in my barely working old car. Police car has its wheels turned left, but as we pass I see him turn them right and follow us, no doubt because my new car flags up as being untaxed and uninsured. So the guy in my new car books it. He's in a 2.5 litre Jaguar, so he leaves me and the cop for dust. He also manages to get past a horse box truck, which is near impossible to get around on our crappy country roads and we lose the cop. No doubt he's swearing and moaning about the horse box blocking him. Then maybe 5 minutes later another cop drives past in the opposite direction, passes us and pulls a U-turn. My mate flaws at the remaining 10 minutes of the journey, slams into my driveway, puts the keys through my litter box and runs round the back into the garden. I pull up a few minutes later, without the cop, I assume he gave up as the police, where I live, don't get BMWs etc usually crappy cars like a Ford Focus, he probably would've been able to talk himself out of it. But we must've encountered the only two police cars that have ever driven on those back roads. At least it showed me that my new car could accelerate well. Driving down the highway with light traffic ahead of me and heavy traffic behind me and go around a bend. Cop was sitting on the other side of the bend running radar. I was probably going only 15 over but was driving a flashy convertible sports car which catching would make the highlight of his day. About 500 feet after I passed him I saw his lights kick on. 
Luckily enough that heavy traffic behind me just happened to be going by him at the time, and he was unable to pull out onto the highway. In a now or never type moment I figured he's already got me for 15 over, and he probably wasn't running radar while trying to pull out, so I opened up the car while he was still trying to pull out. He finally managed to pull out, but by that time I had opened up a mile plus distance on him, and he still had a block of traffic to get through before he could seriously try to catch up. Another mile down the road with probably a 1.5 mile lead I took the next exit and then went backwards on the feeder a few hundred feet and sat and waited at a gas station to see if he got off. Never saw him. Either he missed me taking the exit, it was over a slight hill, so he could not see whether I got off or knew that I exited, but decided that since I broke his line of sight for so long before he could get to it, it wasn't worth pursuing. If the cop caught up to me, I was never going to run, but instead claim I didn't understand the lights were for me as they came on a ways after both I and several other cars passed him. I committed a crime back in high school for which the statute of limitations has expired, and like an idiot I stuck around long enough for the cops to arrive. I took off running through an open field on the corner of two roads. By the time I was through the field, the cop car was rounding the corner about 200 yards from me. I keep running and hop a fence into some random person's backyard about 10 houses from my house. A tall privacy fence. I was fit and athletic, and I figured maybe he couldn't follow over such a tall fence. If he did then my plan was to hop the other tall one and establish another head start. I knew nobody could outlast or outpace me in a foot race unless they were a trackster. And let's face it, most cops aren't. He pulled back and went to the other side of the house looking for me. This house was on a cul-de-sac on one side and a normal street on the other. I he waited there while I hid in one of their bushes catching my breath. He pulled into their driveway maybe thinking I lived there and had gone inside. When he was out of sight I went back over the fence and hid in another bush in a yard we passed on the way to this one. I waited there about 30 minutes while he prowled the area. Once he passed, and it seemed like there weren't multiple cars, I ran through other yards until I was across the street from my house. Then once he passed, I ran home and got changed and got to work fabricating an alibi. The next day a sort of dragnet was set up in that area. I took an alternate route home. Someone I normally walked with who could reasonably be mistaken for me got questioned, and luckily they believed that it wasn't him. They were looking for me, had contacted the school, etc. I never blabbed about it, and I never got identified as the person who did it. Great success. Back when I was still in high school, a group of guys, about 15 or so of us, met up in the nice neighborhood of our town. We were running through yards, ding dong ditching, lighting off firecrackers and bottle rockets in people's yards, pretty much just causing general mischief. We come across a house with a fenced in backyard. Now I'm 6 feet 2 inches and this solid wood fence was still a bit taller than me. I boosted a buddy up, lo and behold we found her above ground swimming pool. We all jumped the fence and started stripping down in this random backyard to enjoy a little skinny dipping. Right before I jumped and I saw a car pull up in at the front of the house and heard the car doors. Curious I pulled my pants back on, grabbed my shirt and jumped the fence. As soon as my feet hit the ground a bright light started shining in my face. I look up, and about 5 feet away from me are two cops coming into the backyard. They looked at me, without thinking I yelled out cops as loud as could turned around and took off. As I'm running along the fence line half naked high school boys are jumping the fence and starting to run with me. I turn around to see what's behind me, and the cops are in hot pursuit. Now most of us were athletes, and knew the backyards pretty well. So we split into a few small groups knowing the cops couldn't catch us. After we lost the cops we stopped to catch our breath and figure out a game plan, and those of us with clothes, to spare handed out shirts and shorts to those who left this behind. Once everyone was decently clothed we started making out way to a friend's house who lived relatively close. We kept to the backyards avoiding the squad cars that were now patrolling the area looking for me and my friends. After a while we made it to our friend's house, he is in his garage with a few of the boys we were with earlier. We sit and chat until the rest of our crew arrives. All of us, but three made it away clean, and they told the officers they didn't know anyone who was with them. 
and that is how I escaped from the cops. Allegedly, I was on my way to my girlfriend's house driving my cool little sports car I had saved up and worked my ass off for during high school. I was cruising the back road on the way at about 50 and this 35. Now it was around 10 at night and fairly dark out. I see a car coming the opposing way and turn my headlights down as the courteous BMW driver I am and next thing I know, I see it, Crown Victoria headlights. I see him slam his lights on and do his best to pop a U-turn on this tight road. I wasn't slowing down and fight or flight kicked in. I dropped a gear and started hauling. I'm probably going around 80 and this 35 on the twisty back road with no cell reception. I hear the siren and I see the occasional glimpse of the red and blue lights ever so slightly when I turn into the next turn while he is trying to muscle that heavy beast of a car through these nimble tight corners and short straightaways. This goes on for a few minutes, the scanner in my car goes off that there is a pursuit down faking and the car is transporting drugs, there is meth made in the back hills around these parts. I know the spot on this road where I can get cell reception for around 30 seconds. Lights still occasionally popping up and sirens still wailing. I'm navigating this road, pulling out all the tricks with heels toe down shifts and driving as fast as I could and I call my then girlfriend to open up the gates to her house and wait for me. I was a minute away. The scanner buzzes on and says there's a nearby sheriff inbound coming from the other direction. My mind is racing and my heart is pounding, still on the phone I tell her to close the gate as soon as I get in and make sure the house lights are off now. I can't see the red and blue behind me anymore, but I don't slow down and I keep on it. I make the quick right hand turn and glide into her driveway and she slams the gate shut. I instantly turn my car off and tell her to stay quiet. Two squad cars zoom by from where I was coming from. She tells me she heard sirens and what the fuck did you do? I tell her I was sorry I was 10 minutes late and I sped my way over here. She was actually very impressed with me not getting caught and how I was such a dumb as ever since I got that piece of sheet BMW TLDL late to dinner party at girlfriend's house and had cop chase through back roads. Okay, so I'd been drinking and ran out of cigarettes. It was late about 1am. I decided to walk to the gas station about half a mile away because drunk driving is illegal and dangerous. On the way back, a cop car drove by me slowly, pulled up the two intersection at the end of the block, and made a right turn. This is something they do around here. If they see someone out after 10pm, they drive by, circle back, and harass them endlessly. I'd seen this move before, so I knew what to expect, and I knew I had a choice. Keep minding my own business, and go to jail for public intox, or faking leg it. I chose the latter. As soon as he made the right turn, and was out of sight, I made a hard left, and ran as fast as I could. Did I mention it was January and there was ice on the sidewalk? I made it about half a block, before I hear his brakes shriek behind me. I looked back, and saw him about to make his third right turn to complete the circle. There were no street lights on this block. So he couldn't see me yet, but his headlights would be right on me in seconds. I dove into the alley on my right and wet myself between two trash cans and a fence. He pulled up to where he'd seen me last and stopped for a moment, confused. After several long seconds, it hit him he's fled. He hammered the gas and took off in the direction he'd seen me walking and I got up to run some more. I could hear his engine moaning a block over and knew he was going the same direction as me now. There was only one way he could turn from the next corner, and that would put me straight in his path. As we each approached our respective corners, he did as I predicted and turned left, right towards me, and I darted into a driveway, to roll under a pickup. He slowed as he approached the intersection, just enough to look both ways, but didn't stop. He powered on straight to the next road, and made another left, thinking I'd doubled back. I quickly got up, and continued down my path and made it a full block before I heard him again. He was on the same road he turned onto before, but going the same direction as me this time. The house to my left had a 3 foot limestone wall around it, which I hastily stepped over and laid flat against, just to be safe. He continued down his road and didn't turn my way, but, to my horror, I heard a second car a block to my right. 
he'd radioed it in, and the whole force was looking for me now. But I'm almost home, and my alley is just half a block away. I sprint the last 30 or so yards, and into my backyard. I light a cigarette in victory and stroll into the house cold and dirty, but undefeated. TLDR, I hid behind stuff. This happened a few years ago, but it's still a stupid kid moment for me. 25 year old Zem was riding home on my motorcycle after work one day around 7 pm and was dealing with any of that seasonal traffic interstate. SWFL. Took me on my crushed rocket going 100 plus down a fairly busy highway, weaving through traffic that felt was standing still and in the dark to boot. Not paying attention, since I'm too focused on the objects I was dodging and passed a parked cop in the median. They must have been debating the chase, since I didn't see lights for maybe a quarter mile. Sheer panic came over me as I realized what I had done, 30 plus over, and traffic is notorious for backing up little further down the interstate, I couldn't outrun them. Quick thinking, I use the dense traffic to my advantage. It was proving difficult for the squad car to make it to where I was due to oblivious drivers, so I moved over into the slow lane. Found a couple larger semi trucks and tucked myself between them. When the squad car finally made it to where I was, I pulled in the clutch and flipped the kill switch. So I was still coasting in neutral, but had no lights on. No lights plus black motorcycle plus good cover equals squad car continuing to fly down the interstate looking for me. Once they passed and I felt I was safe I flipped the kill switch back and restarted the bike. Then proceeded to GTFO on the next exit and thank whatever power had saved me. For those wondering, I don't ride anymore. Got a nice Camry and now drive like a rolled grandma. A little late, but thought it share nonetheless. In high school some friends and I decided to buy some blow up rafts and take them down the local river at night because fuck it. Well we highly underestimated how cold the water was and how long the trip was going to take. We decided to say fuck it and end the trip early and just walk the rest of the way home. At this point we are still pretty far out and have another two or so miles to walk until we can get home. We got out of the river and start trudging through some woods until we reach a pretty well off neighborhood. We start walking through people's backyards until we find a road which looks familiar. One of our friends thought it would be fun to hang back and smoke a bit and then catch up to us. The rest of us were freezing Eris off and told him to just catch up to us so we could get back faster. About 10 minutes later said friend comes barreling around the corner saying there's a cop car following him. Sure enough we can see the lights approaching fast. With no other roads to turn onto we take off in a dead sprint down the road only to reach a small tunnel slash bridge thing and we knew we weren't going to make it to the other side before the cop reached us. We saw a small dirt path leading up to the top of the bridge and decide to take it. At the top of the trail is a bike path. We decided to hold down the trail and didn't see a single cop the rest of the night. I was 23 years old, living paycheck to paycheck and was driving a pose Honda that was falling apart right before my eyes. Both my inspection and registration had expired about 8 months prior and my brake line sheet the bed. If I had to stop, I was forced to use my emergency handbrake, so on top of not having a legal car on the road, I also had a car that would be towed away if I were to be pulled over. At the time, I worked within walking distance of my apartment and was working 10 to 12 hour days 6 days a week. Not much use for the car. If I did have to use it, I tried my best to do it under the cover of night with little to no traffic on the roads. As stated before, I was pretty much broke. I knew that my car needed a lot of work done to it, but I couldn't afford all that was going to be required to get it to pass inspection. So, I finally decided that I needed to get a better job. I get an interview lined up for a better paying position, but the interview is a good 45 miles away. Instead of asking one of my roommates to help me get to the interview or take public transportation, I decide to get into my death trap car and make the drive. I took as many back roads I could think of and was paranoid by every oncoming vehicle. What should have been an hour car I took me two and one half hours. I make, though. Interview goes great and I'm offered the position on the spot. I'm so excited and feeling good about myself, I decide I'm taking the main roads home. 
As I'm driving and calculating in my head how long it will take me to save up to fix my car, a state trooper passes me in the opposite direction. I quickly start panicking. He had to have seen my expired inspection sticker. I look in my rear view mirror, and sure enough the trooper makes a hard stop, and quickly maneuvers a 3 point turn with his lights flashing. For some reason, I went into flight mode, and as I quickly got around a bend in the road and out of sight, I pulled into a random driveway that had a natural tree wall blocking its sight of view from the road. I turned off my car, and watched in my mirror, to see the state trooper go flying past with his lights flashing. I sat in my car in some stranger's driveway for a good 3 hours for it to get dark, and finally made my way home. I immediately called my dad, asked for a loan to fix my car, and gave him my payback date. Since then, I've learned to take way better care of my things, so that I'm never put in that situation ever again. Okay this story isn't exactly running from the cops, let alone outrunning them. But it involves trying to outrun and cops. I was driving home late one night, and I was 18 at the time, so my speed was probably a little excessive. This is in a small town, where everyone could be recognized by their car, even at night. There is a family in our town, that had rowdy as hell kids, known for pulling stunts, and crazy sheet on and off the road. They lived down the same road as me, and I would constantly engage in some of their craziness, drive into their lane, race down the road, normal teenage driving stuff. So this night I'm flying up this hill going towards home, and around this corner, see headlights stopped on a cross street. These headlights instantly pulled onto the road, and were gaining ground catching up with me. They flipped their brights on, as soon as they were behind me. I thought it was one of the guys I know, messing with me, so I proceeded to get a little more crazy. Driving down the center of the road, centering the car over the yellow lines, my driveway was coming up soon. This turn is a 90 degrees turn onto a dirt road, that is quite wide and climbs pretty steep immediately. I have been pulling this stunt off with a lot of practice, and couldn't wait to pull it off in front of my buddy. I would swing my car with a hard right at about 45 miles per hour up onto this road without and warning or indication. Once the car's rear wheels left the pavement I would drift the car sideways up the hill, and could spin a 360, and put the nose of the car back towards the highway at a stop, or climb it sideways drifting for quite a while. I decided I would spin it around, leaving my buddy not ready for the turn, then loose him back on the highway. Problem was, this wasn't buddy. It was the county sheriff. The lights went on, right when I made that instant, no indication turn onto that dirt road sideways. I was still facing uphill, knew I could probably outrun him on the forest service roads, but decided better not. He came to the window, asked what the hell was that about. I quickly threw him a somewhat lie slash truth explanation, that I thought he was one of the kids from the family with a colorful past, following me to mess with me, and I was trying to get away from them. Soon as I used the family name he nodded his head and smiled. Asked me where I was headed. I pointed up the road, and said well you pulled me over on my own driveway. He let me go, told me not to pull stupid stunts like that again, and apologized for the headlights. TLDR. I was driving crazy, thought a buddy with a colorful history with the local police was messing with me, so I drove crazier. Wasn't my buddy, was a cop. Told cop that I thought he was my buddy messing with me to get out of ticket. Worked. I've got a couple of stories though not really out running either time. First story, so I was like 17, and down by the river in my town with some friends smoking weed, drinking, and blowing rails of coke. Anyway, I was understandably not sober. Suddenly I hear someone shout cops. Oh shit, I'm too faked up for the sheet. So we start running down the riverside. Suddenly we see one of those stormed rains. Perfect. Three of us bolt inside it, and stay quiet as fuck. It wasn't a huge opening, but large enough for three people to crawl into. I was at the front of it. We hear some footsteps from above us, and we know the cops are looking around. It was sort of a hill slash ledge thing, that they were standing on. After a few minutes we hear the footsteps leave. We decide to wait for a little bit more. Eventually I volunteer to leave and see, if the coast is clear. Turns out it was. We all left and decided to just chill at someone's house instead. Edit on this one. Not really a river as much as a creek, but we all called it a river. 
Not really relevant but a, eh, I wanna be accurate. Second story, okay, this one is definitely not me running away, but I got away without issue. Again, in around 17. Some friends and I were all having a little get together in the complex where I live. There's a stairwell and a rooftop that's easily accessible that leads to a laundry room slash boiler room slash electrical room by a path that we hang out at, so we usually went there to smoke, drink, and do off the sheet. So at this little get together at this stairwell there's a couple bottles of vodka, tequila, a few blunts, pills, coke, the works. We are having a good time and enjoying ourselves quite a bit. I'm massively faked up. Eventually I decide it's a good time to head home. So I start to leave. I live pretty close by. Anyway, as I'm about to cross the street to get to my side of the complex I see a cop car. Okay, I got this, I think to myself. I wait for the cop to move, since he had the right of way. Only the cop car doesn't move. Instead he motions to me. Sheet. I walk over to the car. Hey officer, how's it going? I ask. Fine, is there a problem? He replies. HMM, that's odd. Nope, no problem. I respond. Why'd you come over here? Well, didn't you motion for me to? Nope, was letting you know to cross. Fuck, then he asks me where are you headed? So I tell him I'm going home. He asks me where home is. I point vaguely towards the direction to where I live and say that way. He stares at me for a solid few seconds before saying go home kid. I thank him and go on my way. Shortly after I get home I get a text from a friend saying that the cops arrived and busted them all. I then realize the cop let me go to busy everyone else. I felt bad at first until I realized I'm safe. So not really running away as much as hiding once and another time just being let go of. But those are my stories. I was driving down Miss Hawaka Road in Elkhart, Indiana, heading towards the Concord Mall at maybe midnight or so. This was maybe 16 or 17 years ago, so I'm not really worried about much at this point. There was a vehicle driving behind us, but the lights didn't look anything like police lights, and me and a friend I was with at the time were bored, looking for something to do, so. Before you get to the mall, there's some county road with a church or something right there, where you can turn left to go towards a Kmart, or right to head into some lower middle class subdivision. I got in the right lane, and as the car went past, we each unleashed an egg, just in time to see the cage set up in the vehicle, to block the back from front, definite cop. I slammed my little fucking 3 cylinder gear into a higher gear, and ducked down a couple roads, parked in a driveway, and we hopped out and ran, traveled through backyards, and got a few blocks over. My friend and I chill, and catch our breath for a minute, and keeping in front yards near houses, go down in a wide dark, hoping to get around and eventually see what's going on near my car. A car pulls onto the street, and before I can even think to myself is this a cop, he slams on the gas, speeding towards us. I'm in a dead heat rush towards this guy's backyard, and I hear the car door open, and him yell something, probably freeze or stop who knows. It's the middle of the night, dark as sheet, and this cop's maglite beam is fucking zigzagging across the yard about to give me a fucking epileptic seizure. Through some bushes, through a front yard, zip across the street, into the next backyard. No flashlight, no stomping of steps behind me, but I'm not stopping at this point. I come to Miss Hawaka Road, across from the mall. No sign of anyone anywhere still, so I zip my pudgy across the road towards the mall. The fuck am I doing? I have no idea at this point. I just egged a cop, ran from him, and the mall even has security that patrols all the time. I got no clue, and I'm way out of my league here. I get to the perimeter wall of the mall, and go around the corner. All clear. I see some sort of attached shipping area for an elder beerman or some gay sheet like that, and somehow managed to scramble Mars on top of a shipping container. I got right in the middle, and lay flat, sure as sheet, that I was probably just minutes from being found, and hauled to jail. I lay there, and watched an occasional police car circle around the exterior of the parking area. A couple of times a car would drive right by me, searchlights looking in nooks and crannies for a hiding person. I saw a cop two different times shine the searchlights up into the high trees near the edge of the mall property, in case I had hidden there. I had not seen or heard anyone on foot yet at this point. 
I had been up on the container maybe an hour or so, when I heard running and panting. I peeked my head up a little, so I could see, and sure enough it was my friend. I hollered at him, and he scrambled up onto the container too. We stayed up there a number of hours, and well after it was light, and cars had started to come into the parking lot, we climbed down, and zipped towards the foliage between the mall and Kmart. We made our way around and back into the subdivision, where my car was. I could see that my car was still in the driveway, where we had ran off. They had smashed the rest of the eggs inside of my car, but I never understood why they didn't tow me or ticket me or anything. They cold veasily egged the inside of my car and towed it. This was about 25 years ago. I was driving a sheety Toyota with more dents than Snow White's cherry, no rear windshield, no speedometer or odometer, and, very obviously, no valid New York safety inspection sticker, the one I had, was actually a small post-it of vaguely the same color. It was 1am, and I was going home, after seeing my girlfriend. As I was traveling down the local state route, a four-lane highway right down the east side of town, I spotted a Saratoga County Sheriff going northbound as I was going south. I thought, A, it's dark, and he can't make out the stickers on the windshield sheet. Because of course, he gets past me, and does a 180, and the red light bar comes on. I was at a right turn, so I took it, floored the gas, killed my lights, and started taking random rights and lefts. I had the advantage of zero traffic, lots of twisting roads, good night vision, and no lights on those back roads. After 15 minutes, I took a side road into a housing development, pulled into a driveway in such a way that of an obstructed view from the main road, killed the engine, and sat for 10 minutes. No cop. I cranked down the window, heard no traffic, and left. I took all back roads back home. No taking chances of running into another cop. Took a half hour to drive about 3 miles. The next day, I found someone to slip me an inspection sticker for 3 times the actual price. Kept me legal for the 4 additional months I had the car. Totaled when an inattentive driver jumped out of a weird intersection. Right out in front of me. This happened to me about an hour ago. My girlfriend's father got me banged from her apartment, and I've been arrested twice for trespassing in the past month for being there. I still go, because fuck him, and just park my car about a quarter mile away, and walk there to avoid him driving by, and seeing my car. So I'm there today and out of nowhere, the doorbell rings. I immediately bolt out the back door and run. When I got about 100 yards away I look back, to see a cop car about to turn down the street I'm walking down. I wait for the car to be behind a building as it's driving and run towards a tree line that separates the neighborhood and a shopping center. The trees were thick as fuck and I have scrapes all over my hands and face now. So I get to the mall and walk through Sears, them down the main hallway. As I'm walking I see two cops walking the same direction as me about 20 feet ahead of me. I have no way of knowing if it's related to me, so I turned into Moe's. I walked out the front of Moe's and through the mall parking lot, then down the street to a McDonald's where I sat in a bathroom stall for about 30 minutes. Now I'm sitting in the dining room drinking a coke and waiting for it to get dark so I can leave fat cops and fuck my girlfriend's dad. So some schoolmates of mine have this kind of game where they alert cops and then run away. A sheety game, I'll admit, but fun nonetheless. These are the type of guys I usually don't hang out with, the edgy 14 year old vapor lords, but fuck it. It was fun. Most of the time they just ride dirt bikes and ATVs from cops, but when they are in bigger cities they can't use them because surveillance. The one time I joined them was in a bigger Reich city, Tallinn. The thing about Tallinn, specifically the old town, is that it has a bunch of older buildings and such. A lot of those buildings have really cool old courtyards kinda built in between them, some of which you can climb into if you can get over the fence slash gate. So the one time I joined them, we were running from a relatively slow moving cop car and we climbed into one of those courtyards. Of course, these courtyards still have surveillance cameras and security systems, but it was dark and most of us were wearing sheet over our faces so it was, probably, fine. Honestly it was a pleasant experience. Would do again. I was riding shotgun, when my buddy gave a little too much gas engaging the clutch. 
We had seen the cop in the Chipital parking lot directly beside us, and I had mostly assumed the chirp of the tires would be followed with pretty lights and exchanging of monotonous pleasantries with the slight chance of a small ticket, but today held more interesting events in store. Before the cop had completed his routine looking left turn out of the Chipital lot and activating his flashes the pedal was floored and the four cylinder beta was screaming through downtown campus area. What the fuck dude? I ask my buddy who is normally a decently level headed guy. His only response was not today. I fastened my seat belt at this point realizing shtf. About a second after it clicks we make a right turn at the police station headed straight to campus hospital. But within a tenth of a mile we make another left into an apartment complex. At this point my buddy driving kills the lights and shifts to neutral and tells our other buddy in the back to stfu. I'm laughing all the while cause yalo. We roll through the lot, all the spaces are taken up to the first left hand turn of the horseshoe shaped lot, roll on down to the next left turn, still all taken, dead quiet. As we approach the dumpster at the end of the lot I'm at a sheet knowing my brother's about to go to prison. I have no idea why he ran, but prison must suck, no matter the reasoning. As we draw within a dozen feet of the dumpster the very last parking space on the right appears empty before us from under the bumper of the vehicle next to it. He whips it in, slams the e-brake, and we bolt down the back hill of the complex to a small neighborhood, housed where we hop the fence to the backyard and duck between the fence and the shed, to hide and reflect up what has happened. It is at this point, since my what the fact dude, has failed to retrieve me any sound until I whisper to my driver a little more logically why'd you run bro? His answer makes me want to run to the cops laughing hysterically. I had a beer. A beer. Yay I drank a beer. When? About an hour ago. So at this point I kind of laugh out a what the fuck startling a dog in the nearby yard. Eyes widen in fear, but we keep our cool and the dog quiets down within a few seconds. We crouch in this yard for the next half hour or so watching red and blue lights bouncing off the houses adjacent to our hiding spot before we decide the coast is clear and start walking to a local gas station. We call up our other friend on the way and tell him he has to find another ride from work. Needless to say at this point we all start drinking as soon as we leave the gas station because we just outran the police and didn't have any methamphetamine to shoot up. Jokes. We hike it back to the house where I hear my chauffeur dread about his car getting towed and him going to prison for the next few hours. I tell him to report it stolen but he protests and goes to check on it shortly before the sun comes up. I sleep when I awake he's in the living room beaming. The cops never even found the old beater. All in all we decide the officer chasing us never got within a tenth of a mile of us during the quarter mile pursuit. Driver knew the complex we had pulled into and had started running before the officer gave chase. Twas an enjoyable experience, but he needs to stick to smoking weed. Buried comment confidence time. I drove a 72 Chevelle in high school. Many of us would regularly go drag race, 1 8th mile, after school and on the weekends. This was the early 90s in the rural south, so you had the motorheads and the base cheeks both, muscle cars and subwoofer heavy Japanese cars slash lower trucks, respectively, as two of the car focused cliques. I was one of the leaders of the motorheads, and my buddy Marcus was the same for the base cheeks. And he was great at wiring. Sort of. Enough to wire up a switch in my dash, that would turn off, and on my brake slash rear lights. I only ever used it twice before it malfunctioned and almost got me killed and one of those was to run from the cops. We'd occasionally do it when caught racing or just doing 70 in a 40 on a country road. If the cop was going the opposite way, you could faking, lay down on the pedal and get foe before he ever found a driveway to turn around in and we'd often kill the lights for a bit to run hard and get away, which was dangerous as sheet, hence the trial light switch for the rear only. There's no real story, as I realize we ran a few times, it was exhilarating as hell. That's also why I'm using my alternate account to write this, because I never want my son to know that. But the feeling of shredding past a cop going the other way on a Tallinn, or one and a half, really, road and making the split second choice of just faking running is really great. Obviously, had we been really caught, or hurt ourselves, or others that would be different. And I certainly was yelled at by local cops, because they knew it was my car, but there was a bit of a game there too. And they were in on it. Different times. Different lives. 
I didn't exactly get away, but I think it counts. I was driving about 15 over the speed limit going home late after the bar. I pull up fast behind this car in front of me. Turned out to be a cop. So he pulls in behind the sheets. Well I pull up to the stoplight and check for him to peek. No car there. So at the light I gunned it when it went green. The road was 40 miles per hour I probably hit 90, 100. Now I'm a very perceptive person and make sure I check what is going on around me. I quickly get tipped off when I see these headlights coming up behind me. Watch them a little while in the rear view until I realize they were coming up super fast. Now I'm going 100. How fast is that dude going? Seemed sketchy as hell. So I panicked for a split second, but I couldn't let the cop see me break hard. So I kept my speed as I noticed a hill up ahead. I hauled over the hill and slammed on my brakes all the way down to 45. Have to give him that extra 5, so it's not as weird. Cop comes flying over the hill finally turning his lights on thinking I'm going to run. So I pull over. He reads me the regular line, license and registration. Continues with the where are you coming from? Now I learned from my job to always pick my words. Rather than tell him I was coming home from the bar I advised him I was coming home from hanging out with friends. I've learned never to lie, but to sometimes tell the lighter side of the truth. Anyway he ends up telling me my license plate light was out, and to get it fixed, it was not out. The whole time we talked he knew I was hauling sand I knew that he knew. Yet he had no proof he was too far away to determine that properly. He sent me on my way, and told me to have a good night. Close saint I ever came to jail time. I was at a party and the house was too crowded so a lot of us were outside. I hi, not drunk so I was aware of my surrounding to a greater degree than the people around me. There were people climbing on the roof of the house next door, so I told my friends that we should be prepared to get foe. I looked down the street in time to see a car park and a man step out and turn on a flashlight. Immediately, I knew it was a cop. As any good person would do, I shouted cops at the top of my lungs and immediately ran for the back of the house. I felt a tidal wave of people at my back. The house was on the corner of two different streets. My plan was to dash behind the house to the street that the cop didn't park at, but as I turned the corner, I was that there was another cop car parked on that side. I noticed that the back edge of the yard had a hedge with a hole in the middle. This house had been busted before. I along with my sea of followers flooded through the hedge and took off down the street. We knew cops wouldn't bother going for the runners when there was a house full of underage people drunk off of their ass. So after about a block, we knew we were fine. Since I was a cross country runner in high school, as you can see from the rest of the thread, that sport provides a valuable life skill, I stayed ahead of the pack all the way down the street. Being high rather than drunk probably helped with that. I knew I had to make my way back down the street to find my friends. Again, totally safe due to the fact that the cops were busy with the house itself. I eventually found my friends and returned to their apartment to re-up my what flow. After the re-up, we passed by the house on our way to find a new party. The night was still young and the cops were still there. They were searching the house with dogs and it was scary as sheet to pass by them because we totally smell of weed but we didn't end up getting stopped. Nice something I can comment on. When I was much younger, around 14 at the time, I was in a shipping center and, not proud of this, was a stupid kid, tried to steal some spray on deodorant from a shop. Next thing you know him being dragged into the back of the store by security and him having to give them all my details. This was 3 days before Christmas, and in my head I was thinking there is absolutely no way I can let myself get caught for this, or else I can kiss that new console goodbye. So in the back I have to give the security my fake details that I made on the spot and then wait 15 minutes until the police arrived and give them the details, which somehow I managed to get right. Anyway I kind of have a chance to befriend the police officers and act extremely apologetic. We even crack some jokes together. They tell me they are going to have to escort me home in their police car and start walking me out. Since I think they trusted me at this point they just let me walk alongside them and tell me to get in the back of the car. As soon as they get in the car I make a dash for it behind the car and run off around the corner down a hill in the middle of the town. I can hear the sirens catching up with me after around 30 weck. 
so I made a left turn and jumped into some owns garden who had a wall that was about a foot tall. Lay down behind the wall and the police car drove right past me, jumped into an alleyway behind the house and walked home. Never tried to steal after that again. I wouldn't say outrun, more like evaded. I was at a state competition with my high school at a giant convention center. Me and some friends had a few hours of downtime, so we found a quiet spot and chilled for a while. There were some escalators nearby, and I turned to my friend hey, no balls you won't go on that escalator, and dab the entire way up bet. Seems pretty lame, but the dares grew from there bet you won't plank on the rails all the way up bet you won't sit on the rail all the way down bet you won't hop the rail and slide down the metal between the two escalators. It was freaking awesome by the way. The last one was when I told my friend to jump over both rails from one escalator to the other he jumped from the down to the up escalator and was about to go back when a middle aged mall cop lady walked over started yelling at him from the bottom floor. He stayed on the up escalator and got the hell out to dodge. The cop got on her walker talkie and about a minute later like 10 cops showed up. We texted my friend and told him to meet us at a different semi secluded spot. We grabbed all our stuff and left. The cops swept the building, but we went to a different wing on a different level of the single largest building I've ever been in, besides her mom's vagina haha, and they never found us. To clarify the cop only yelled at the one guy, because that's the only thing she saw happen. We all freaked, because we didn't want to be guilty by association, or whatever. A while ago I jacked a ride sharing bike that was just leaning against a wall outside somewhere in Chicago. I was kind of far from my hotel and thought it wouldn't hurt to take this thing. Anyway, I arrive at my hotel and lean the bike against a light pole. Made eye contact with these two cops, who were looking right at me. Look away. From corner of my eye, I spot them coming towards me. Here's the thing. I always get super paranoid around cops for some reason, so I probably spazzed a bit and looked super suspicious. Out of my periphery, I spot these cops starting to cross the street towards me so stupid me decides to run. So do the cops. Duck into hotel. The first thing I think of is to head for the elevators, but I spot the exit to the garage and peel off towards it hoping to lose them. Around the corner of the exit, in the garage, is another elevator whose doors happen to open right as I'm there. I run in, spam the close door button, ride it up to the 4th floor of the garage, make sure to hit FLs 3 and 2 before I hop out. I had no idea where to go, so I ran in between some cars and hid for like half an hour. Chicago cops are serious about bikes, but not enough to do a whole search for a ride sharing bike thief. I mean, I wasn't even stealing it, just borrowing. I was driving on a two lane freeway and couldn't resist waiting until it turned into three lanes since I was stuck in 45 minutes of dreadful traffic. I switched lanes to the new fast lane on the left to get out of this anxiety driven drive home. As I'm flooring it, I can clearly remember seeing this motorcycle cop looking in my direction. I was the only one on this lane at that time. So here I'm clearly breaking the law driving around 90 miles per hour, and as I'm approaching him, I look to the left, to get a clear view of him, and it appears to me, he said something like, oh shit. As soon as I was able to process what he said, I knew I had two options. Pull over or continue breaking the law. Guess what I choose? My adrenaline kicked in, and my heart started beating very fast. I looked at my rear view mirror, and see that he still hadn't merged onto the freeway, so within milliseconds I looked for a way out. I see the semi truck, about 10 cars in front of me to the right, with a very very long bed, very long. I worked my way very quickly to the slow lane, and at this point this freeway had turned into 4 lanes. I merged into the slowest lane, and decided to drive next to the semi truck I had mentioned, the truck was on the third lane I was on the fourth. I have a sedan, so I was just able to look at my rear view mirror and see where this cop was. He's still on the fast lane, I'm still on the freeway and the exit is coming right up. At this point many things are running through my mind and the only thing I care about is making it to this exit. The cop passes me as he's still on the fast lane, I make the quick exit and start looking for a place to park my car. Right off this exit this street is filled with industrial buildings and I ended up finding a parking lot filled with cars. I quickly found a spot, parked, 
turned off the car, unlocked my phone, opened the police scanner app, tuned in and waited. In the end I wasn't sure what agency the motorcycle cop was with and at that point I could care less lol. I stayed in my car for about 2 hours, because I sure as hell didn't want to get back on the freeway, just to find myself in the back of a police car, in handcuffs. Needless to say I told my girlfriend I went back to work, because they needed me, and that I had stayed for overtime. Friend of mine who was 18 at the time, was leaving the bars with his friend, who was 21. 21 year old decides to let the 18 year old drive his Hummer home from the bars, even though they were both tanked. Ended up thinking it was a good idea, to go off roading through a ditch, and as soon as they did a cop turned on his lights behind him. My friend, freaking out at the time, and already being on probation, decided they could just take the Hummer through cornfields to outrun the cops. They ripped into the fields, and turned off the lights, so the cops couldn't see them, but they could still hear the exhaust from the Hummer in the fields, so they tried to stay with them just by the sound of it. After about a 3 hour chase through the fields, the cops, ended up being about 10 cops chasing them, called off the chase, because it was getting foggy, and was around 6am, when people would be going to work, so they didn't want to put them in danger. Friend got away. Only got away for about an hour though. They tried to get back on the road and hit a huge culvert on the side of the road and popped the axle off the hummer. Ended up having to walk back through a field to a nearby church bench in a small town, and tried calling people for rides. Random person drove by them, and saw they were covered in mud and suspicious looking. Person called the cops, and about 10 minutes later a whole squadron of cop cars surrounded them. Cops got out, had them at gunpoint, and arrested them. Twice. Once was right after I got my license. I need to set the scene a bit, my street dumps out onto a main street. To the left, is a small hill, and about one quarter mile down, a street on the left with a steep ice valley. I was pulling out of my neighborhood, taking a left. I pulled out a little short in front of someone, so I floored it, to not make them have to slow down. I was driving my dad's V8 caddy, which spun the tires, while I was pulling out. About halfway through my turn, a cop crests the hill that's now in front of me. So I end up burning my dad's car's tires like 200 feet in front of a cop. I get up to 34 miles per hour, speed limit 35, and just as I'm about to get over the hill, I see the cop turn around at my street and turn his lights on. I floored it, so I could make that left, turn into the valley before the cop caught up enough to see me. Made it just in time. Saw just the light bar fly past in my rear view mirror. Second time. There's this one real douchey cop in my area. Cops are great and all, but this guy is a jerk off. Anyway, I had a headlight out. Saw this guy on the side of the road. He pulls out, I duck into a neighborhood, and make a couple turns. Pulled into a driveway, and killed the car. He drove right by me. I fixed the headlight the next morning. I wouldn't say ran, but got away very loosely. Basically hauling some down the highway noticing people were being plebs in the right lane. Me, 18, in my beat up old SR5 slow as fuck, poorly running 87 Corolla though passing everyone in the left lane was a great idea, except the part where I saw the parked cop cycle his car into drive right before a stretch of highway with nowhere to run. He pulls out, gets into the merge lane and waits for a cleaning. As this goes on I panic instantly hammer the brakes and flick my blinker on left. The merge he pulled into is the last little intersection across the highway to a small farm, so the left lane has a turn lane to go left. So here we sit, a Mexican standoff waiting on traffic. As soon as he saw me slow down he stopped, put his car into reverse on the shoulder, and attempted to slowly back up to the intersection as I waited for my opening to turn. Get my opening, and I put all my, probably like 7 to 35 HP, based on how the car decided to run to the floor. Did a U-turn, and went with the traffic back down the highway the opposite way. Cop obviously didn't feel like trying to maneuver traffic, and as I sped off I looked back, to see him repark and wait. Never have I ever puckered that hard driving before. 8 to the party as always but still worth telling. Alright, one of these was a bonfire one of my classmates had, all of us underage drinking. The mom of the kid's house were it doesn't know he's throwing a bonfire. We are out in the country, and there's a dirt lot next door. 
when my friend got directions on where to park, she didn't realize he said park on the road by the dirt lot and she ended up parking in it. We walk over to the fire, and not 15 minutes later everyone decides to bail to go to a different party, but their car is parked in this kid's driveway. So they leave, and as we're walking back to my friend's car we realize there are at least two huge dogs barking at us from the dirt lot, blocking the car. So we start going into the woods to hang out until these dogs go away, and the cops pull into the driveway. My friend's cousin takes off running, because he's got a warrant out for his arrest, and we go farther into the woods, so they can't see us. We find our way back to this guy's house, that we were at, and lay down behind a wood pile. The cops shine their spotlight right over us looking for the person whose car this is sitting here, and then call my friend on her phone. So here we are laying not even 200 feet from these cops and she's talking to them on the phone. They pull out of this guy's driveway, and we bolt back into the forest, to find it's neat a thigh deep swamp. By the time we circled around the cops are gone, sitting down the road, and we have the guy who's, how's this is come pick us up. Decided to ditch my friend's car for the time being. We found out later, that the property we were on has a snake infestation. Another short one, just because it was too funny was something, that happened to my ex. He was the only one over 21 at an underage party, and climbed a tree, when the cops showed up, so he didn't get the fine for providing the alcohol. About 45 minutes later the cops leave and he hopped down. How they didn't notice him sitting up in this tree right next to them, I have no idea. Oldest Honda Accord with flip up lights. I'm 19 leaving work, and have some Mary Jane in the pocket. My car had a tail light out. Cop gets behind. Suv, lights them up. I'm getting off an off ramp, and make a left it's a single lane country road. I see a car in front of me, and a car coming on the other side. In that split second I ask myself do you want to go home, or go to jail? Dropped it in second, and went in opposite lane, around the other car with just enough time, to squeeze by the oncoming car. The cop couldn't pass, so now I have some space. I remember the Chilbertsville, in has a parking lot that loops around the back, so I punch it down there. Coming around the back a car is trying to back out of parking spot, almost hits me, but he then proceeds to block the cop, so I'm coming around, and I decided to loop back the way we came, because of the farms. At this point I have a nice length, and I kill my lights make a sudden left onto dirt road. I end up hitting a pasture fence, but I get out, and I start running. Being the way the driveway is it bends, so the cops were on the main road. I saw them all pass by, so I call my girlfriend tell her she has to pick me up. I walk down to the farmhouse, and I tell the owners my car broke down is it okay to park behind the house. They say yes, so I park it there. Knowing the plate has my home address we expect a visit where we planned on saying the car was stolen, was only a $500 clunker I used for work. The cops do come the next day and ask me if we lent the car to two black males. I'm sitting in amazement because I know the one cop got close enough to see, but maybe since it was night. Next day I pick the car up and take it to the scrapyard and scraped it. Never ever heard anything about it again. I would never do it again though. Got lucky. When I was about 14 or so, I was hanging out with some rude dudes and they were constantly bothering people. Like dragging roadblocks in front of houses, closing off different roads, that sort of stuff. Someone decides to call the cops on us. I was with about 5 other people, and they came in with 2 cars back. We agreed to split up, urban environment, lots of places to go, and me and a friend of mine decided to run into an alleyway that was connected to backyards and a community garden. It was very late and this was one of the only places where there were close to no lights burning. I hid between bushes and some green garbage bins, and stayed still when two of them came with flashlights. They probably figured we went into some backyards or something, and just went away. One other time we were on this soccer field at night, and someone called the cops on us. Luckily the other side of the soccer field had a giant fence with water next to it. I climbed the fence, jumped across the water and ran home, was about 5 minutes away, and stupid. They found me one more time, when I was almost home, but I shook them off in the alleys behind my house. Alleys are good. Gardens as well. I'm late for the party I guess, but here's my story. 
When I was a dumb teenager, I used to smoke lots of weed with my friends. One of them lived about 5 kilometers away from my place, and when I was going home late at night, there usually was no more public transport. And needless to say, 19 years old potheads can't afford a cab ride home. So I usually ran the 5 kilometers. First because otherwise the walk to my place would have been way too long and boring and second because I was some kind of a sports addict at that time. I had to go through a very rich neighborhood across a pedestrian bridge over a highway exit which led into one of Frankfurt's main Germany biggest parks. On that particular night I'm talking about, I had 25g of weed with me, headphones on and was running casually through said rich neighborhood. My music wasn't too loud to not hear the civilian car pull up behind me and following me in my tempo. It was a small one, some Citroen or something like that. So I guess the people in the car wanted to beat me up, mug me, or after feud or something. So I took off sprinting onto the bridge. The car following me, suddenly sporting a police light and siren, which was the even worse thing for me. Those crazy cops even followed me over the bridge completely wrecking the suspension of their car on the stairs leading up to it and down from it. I knew there's a trash can right around the corner when first entering the park. So I sprinted towards there, threw feud in it, continued to run into a pitch black area of the park, which wasn't funny at all, because I'm severely night blind, and climbed into a tree. The cops drove around my area for half an hour looking for me, since I already did a 800 meter sprint, and they figured correctly I couldn't have gotten far after that. Luckily at some point, they stopped searching for me, I waited for another half hour or so, took my wed, and continued running home. It's called a Suzuki GSXR 1000. The finest machine that our Japanese gods have ever graced us with. Cops don't even stand a chance if you can hit a highway fast and they don't have air backup. I usually stop because most stops are for petty bullshit they make up because they get us to fee for sport bikes. I've probably outrun more than 10 different police agencies and got caught one time by the Texas DPS. Those fakers are nuts. I had one clocked me at 140 miles per hour on a highway in the Texas panhandle so I said fuck it going to jail if I stop so let him work for it. Clicked it down a gear and left him. My buddy said he flipped across the ditch and chased me for maybe a mile then cut off his lights, got on the access road, but kept hauling as. I took an exit 2 miles down right into a construction zone and couldn't get out of massive traffic that backed up. Dude rolls up on me and get out with his gun out. I decided I was done. Didn't even get charged with a felony because I admitted to the speeding and claimed I never saw him turn around on me. City cops won't chase. They try to get a description of the bike and your gear then. If you get spotted sitting somewhere they roll up on you and fuck with you. To get around it, I have 5 different helmets and a lot of different jackets. I also have an R1 I will ride if I find out they are looking for a GSXR like mine. Without run city, county, and the DPS a lot but again, you are taking your chances with them because they chase. And if they wreck chasing you, which happened north of Dallas a few years ago, you can actually get it with an attempted murder charge, to go along with your felony evasion. Oh and if you wreck you get to die. One time, me and my buddy were visiting his mom and sister who happened to live in a more rural area which is mostly back roads for miles on each end. They have two quads at his mom's house, and we both love to mess around those whenever we get the chance. Well, we were out for a ride one day, and decided to turn around in this dirt turnaround that connects like three other driveways. Only problem was that we really liked to go to the turnaround and do a few donuts, because it was pretty open and the ground was really dry. As we're about pull and he must have noticed the car waiting for us in the driveway, I didn't. I pulled in and immediately realized that there was someone in the car waiting for me. I go a little past them, and turned around, and looked at them, they were reversing right towards me. The lady inside swung open her door, to try to knock me off, and started to get out, but as soon as she did I dropped a gear, and got the fuck out of there. I flew down the street, and got to his mom's house and called him. The lady tried chasing me down the street, but I lost her, and my buddy made it back but now we had to hide the quads, because they would impound them, if they found out we were riding on the streets. 
we took them to a friendly neighbor's house and hid them in a shed and avoided the state troopers riding around for the rest of the day. I have another story that doesn't exactly involve cops, but rather just a crazy riding experience. I wouldn't say I outran him, but I did race far enough and fast enough to get to a destination where a bit of genius popped in my 17 year old brain. It was night time on a Friday in 1992, and, as a typical teen my pal and I were cruising and smoking a little herb. I was in a later 1980s Toyota Celica. It wasn't so much of a chase as this thing would not run much in that day, but I was doing about 75 miles per hour in a 35 miles per hour zone. When I came over a hill a cop was sitting in a speed trap. He flipped on his cherries, and when he got out of the place he was sitting I was at the top of another hill, and he was going to the bottom of the hill I had just passed. So he was one hill behind me, so to speak. I was only about two blocks from my house, when I got a great idea. At the bottom of the hill I was currently on there is a large condominium complex on the right side. This was an only option as I had nothing but a straightaway after me. I turned hard right at about 35 miles per hour into the entryway of the apartment complex. You were cars lined up on each side so I pulled up behind the last car on the right hand side. And, here is the impressive part, to think I thought of this, when I was high, slowed down using my handbrake, so the brake lights would not work. I turned the lights off, and turned the car off, after putting it in neutral. I reclined the seats as did my friend in the passenger side, and we sat there as we saw the lights from the officer's car drive right by us. We sat there for a good 40 minutes just waiting for them to catch us, but they eventually gave up. Thanks for helping me remember this from the go, call my buddy who are sitting in the car with me now, and see how he's doing. I owned a bike for about 5 months. One night a group of us took them to the club about 20 minutes from where I lived. Around 2.30 am we are returning back to our town on the interstate. Speed limit back then was 55 miles per hour, it's currently 70 miles per hour, and we were doing about 80 miles per hour in a group of 7 of us. Approaching our exit, there's a little turnaround thing where the cops sit, we fly by it, and a state trooper was there. Thankfully he was facing the other way, my guess is, because the overpass is where he was focusing his speed trap. The trooper turns his lights on and starts to chase us. We were literally seconds from the exit and all of us hit it, upon approaching the main street, where some went left, and others went right. Couldn't go straight, because of the bayou. Well, I turned right and had a couple of my buddies with me, I knew there was a shopping center right there with an exit to the neighborhood behind it, and the entrance and parking lot is blocked to the trooper. He's still coming, but the aframp is long and curvy, so he couldn't take it at like 90 like we did. I turn into the parking lot, kill my lights and holes to the far end and the exit to the neighborhood. I turn right, headed into the neighborhood, and make a right on the first cross street going behind the shopping center parking lot that I just zoomed across. I take the first left, go down two blocks and pull into my buddy's backyard. He has a wooden fence and the gate toward the back of his house that's where he parks his boat is usually opened. So, I turn in there, roll around in front of his shed, and turn my bike off. My buddy came outside as he was sitting in his sunroom, which faces a backyard, playing games on his Nintendo or Super Nintendo. I told him what happened, so we jump in his truck and go take a ride. By the time we hit the main road, cops are flying around with their lights slash sirens on. We head to the local gas station that serves us food and sit there and eat. For about the next half hour, cops continued to pass back and forth. Like they figured the bikers were hiding and had to appear at some point. After eating, I went back to my buddies, we played games till about 7am. Then I crashed on the couch in his sunroom. That afternoon when I woke up, I drove my bike home. Best part is that the cops didn't catch any of the buddies. I also ran a few times from cops in the cane fields when I was on my three-wheeler. It was easy to get away, and it would be funny as hell escaping, crossing the bridge and going home, and then driving my truck to my buddy's house that was near the cane fields, and watching the cops look for me. Did it a dozen times or so as a kid. We used to rabbit hunt and stuff and typically, after about the tenth time you shot, the landowner would call the cops. I even had times that I would be on one road and come up to another and see a cop sitting there and chase me. It wouldn't take long to lose them. 
cars aren't made for those roads. Not proud, but I did it by hiding. About 19 years old, I already had two speeding tickets, and in my state, a third moving violation of the same offense meant having your license pulled. This was always on my mind, but I was too stupid to drive the speed limit. After dropping my girlfriend off one night, I was heading home. It was about 10pm and very dark. I knew I was over the speed limit, but it was a back road. I watch an oncoming car pass me and turn around. I assumed the worst, and before he could turn on the blue lights, I killed my lights and shot down a side street into a neighborhood. Because my car was a manual transmission, I quickly turned my car off while coasting and rolled into a driveway silently and laid down across the front seats and waited. Within 15 minutes the neighborhood was crawling with police. There must have been 4 cars slowly canvassing every street. I waited them out for a couple hours. Eventually they moved on, but I still waited. After a third hour, I started my car and acted and slowly drove out of the neighborhood and went home. I was heading home on my motorcycle on a three lane highway approaching a signaled intersection. I was already moving pretty fast, 85-90 miles per hour, when the light went yellow. I was only a second or so away from the light, so I didn't think it'd go red by the time I got to it, and just to make sure, I accelerated a little bit up to about 95 to 100. To quote Charlie Murphy, wrong, wrong. It went red in what seemed like a half second later. I knew there was no way I was going to stop in time, so I just figured no big deal, there's no concern for cross traffic, since I'll be well through it, before they even get moving. I glanced left as I went through the intersection and of course, there was a cop. I looked in back in my rear view mirror, and it was like a scene out of Dukes of Hazard. The cop was in a K9 unit, and back then, that meant a full size Chevy Bronco like the one OJ drove. They don't handle so great, so he was sliding all around as he came out, and got on the highway after me. I figured I was screwed, so I started pulling over to the side. Then I noticed I was coming up on an exit ramp in about a one quarter mile. No lights yet, so, may as well make him work for it, right? I slowed down, and took the exit ramp at like 70, went up the road a short bit, glanced back, no cop yet, so another turn off into a small development where a friend of mine lived. Turned out he wasn't home, so I ended up parking slash hiding there for about 5 to 10 minutes, then ventured home at a more sane pace. Got pretty lucky that day. I have made it away from the police for speeding 3 times. I was on a road going 50 in a 25 with a median in the center. Officer flashes his lights at me going in opposite direction, and in my rear view, see him making a U-turn far in the distance. I turned into a parking lot, parked, got out of my car and walked away. When I got to the sidewalk I saw him coasting through the parking lot. He just drove through and then left. I was speeding down the highway in my hometown and a parked cop in the median tagged me. He had to wait to pull out because of traffic behind me, so I got over four lanes, exited the highway. You can only take a right onto the road from this particular exit because of the median. I took a right and then made a U-turn at the first chance I got. As I was driving back by the exit I saw the officer making his right turn. I pulled into a gas station 100 feet down the road from the exit and started pumping gas as I watched him speed by the gas station. I was in the middle of Indiana, where there are straight up, right and left turns off of the highway instead of exit ramps. I was going about 95 and a cop going the opposite direction came out of nowhere. I sped up and kind of cut off a semi truck. I felt pretty bad about this because I used to work with truckers, but it had to be done to get out of sight of the officer as fast as possible as I got into the right lane. I kept my speed up as long as I could. Five more seconds after I got into the far right lane in front of the semi and then had to slam on my brakes to make a sharp right turn off the highway. Then I floored it. There was a white sedan that looked a lot like mine that was driving behind that semi. When I got a couple hundred feet down the road I saw that car getting pulled over by the cop farther down the highway. I laughed my ass off and the adrenaline was pumping. It was a moment I will never forget. I've ditched cops three times. The first was when I was speeding down a long stretch of road before my house at 1am, hitting about 110 miles per hour being a moron. 
Flew right by a cop. Saw him flip his lights and turn my way. There was a slight hill before my street. So I hit the hill turned onto my street. Shot into my driveway. Killed the engine. Lights. And lowered my seat. Few seconds later I could see the lights and them slowly going down my street. The second I was dicking around in my car with me ex in a parking lot. Power sliding and stupid sheet. Local security had called the cops. Cop showed up as we were leaving and asked if I was dicking around. I said no I saw that guy as I came out of the store he just took off down the street. Cop flipped his lights and went that direction. Couldn't believe that one worked. Third time was when I used to go to car meets, the kind that everyone thought they were in a fast and furious movie. Me and my buddies saw all the cars leaving together, so we were bored and followed. Ended up out in the boondocks at a stretch of road with maybe two houses near. About 80 cars lined the road and two about to race. They race then someone yells the cops are coming. Sure enough two minimum later, while everyone is scrambling about 12 cop cars start coming down the street. Me and two other cars dipped out down this dirt road and managed to find other roads that lead to another main street out of there. Heard at the next meet we were the only ones to make it out without tickets. When I was in high school me and some friends decided to go for a late night swim in a neighborhood pool. That was the main event of the night, before then we had just been drinking beers in my buddy's basement. We get to the pool, start to swim, and soon enough we see lights. We all split and go separate ways. Long story short, I make it back to the basement safe and sound. Other friends get back to the house as well 15 minutes later and everyone is back except one person. That one person got nabbed by the cops and basically snitched on where he was staying at. We are in the basement and hear a hard knock on the door. We try to play it cool and act like we are sleeping. Mother answers the door and lets the cops in. Cops walk downstairs to talk to us and basically knew that we had went swimming. I thought there is no damn way he can prove it was us. So I stand up and try to save the day and say I don't know what you're talking about officer. I still had my towel around my neck because I was drying off. I admitted defeat and had to go to the station with me and my buddies in the back of a cop car. They let us off pretty easy, just had to do community service and my parents had to pick me up that night. I think about it now and we were so young the cops didn't even suspect us to be drunk. Could have been a totally different situation. Throw away for oblivious reasons. There was an end of the year party during my senior year of high school. Not many people had shown up point now. To get to this spot you had to drive down a very shitty two track. Treacherous rain puddles from the night before. Giant mud holes. And there was only enough room for one car to fit on the two track. When I first arrived my buddy offered me a few shots and I took them like right away. He then asked me if I wanted to smoke a blunt with him in my car. It was in the very back of the car lot we sort of established away from the party area. Right when we get in the car and start smoking, my other buddy jumps on the hood of my car and yells cops are here. We got a geo. Now, I was terrified. Those shots started to kick in and the blunt kinda didn't help our situation. This was a singular one way two track that the cops were coming up. Some drove towards the cops others ran into the woods abandoning their cars. While my friends and I drove our cars further into the two tracks, I had no faking clue where the fuck I was at this point. I drove a small front wheel drive Pontiac Bonville. Some faking how, I lost my friends and they drove off ahead of me in their jeep and left me and my other buddy with no clue as to where we were. We drove a while and eventually found out we took a few wrong turns and through all of this madness. There were deep mud puddles, and my car by some crazy act of faking god, survived huge potholes, it didn't even get stuck, I did get a huge hole in my muffle from nailing a pothole however, eventually after lots of trial and error turns we made it out, most of the people got away from the party, only a couple people were given mips, tldr cops show up at a party on a singular two track at night, adventures further down two track to only find myself, and a buddy driving in the woods with no clue to where we are. We get out after like 3 hours. This isn't really out running the cops. It was more we had the cops called on us. And we had to hide for a bit. So anyway, in high school, my best friend, myself, and our band's bassist went to a party at our vocalist's house. 
It was some sort of family and friends thing, and since we were underaged, we weren't trying to drink just to play it safe. That didn't stop our vocalist from sneaking us drinks though, I took a sip and put it down before anyone noticed, but one of the adults saw a drink in my best friend's hand. Note that none of us wanted it and didn't drink more than a sip. The lady started flipping sheet for no reason, like I get you don't want underage kids drinking, but we don't know you lady, calm down, we won't given you the drinks had you not been a beach. So me, best friend, and bassist decide we are leaving, because being yelled at by strangers isn't worth our time. A couple of the adults thought otherwise, instead trying to physically block us from driving away, had to swerve around one of them, and as we are driving away we see them on the phone trying to read our license plates to what we assumed were the cops. For drunk driving I assume. I told best friend to go to my house, since it was the closest, which was still a 15 minute drive cause middle of nowhere, and we hung out and played guitar for a few hours before going home. In hindsight, I doubt the cops even did anything, but that didn't stop us from calling it that time we escaped a one star wanted level. It wasn't so much outrun as it was outbluffed. One of my friends in college had gone to a party and I had to go track him down and get his a show safely. We were both under 21, so neither of us were even supposed to be at that party, much less drinking. I ended up finding him in the backyard, and just as I found him, I heard someone scream cops. I sure as hell wasn't going to jail that night, and I wasn't about to let my friend end up in jail either. So I grabbed him, and dragged him along as I hurried through a few backyards, eventually ending up in a park. It was a big open park, and there weren't many places to hide. So instead, I looped my arm through my friends, and then I told him to walk straight, and laugh at whatever I said. We walked slowly down the path in the park, me talking and him laughing, as if we were a couple of friends out on a stroll or some sheet. Mind you, it was like 11 at night, so it was dark and there weren't many people out. The cops drove by us a few times, but I guess they were fooled by our two friends out for a stroll, totally not running from the cops act, because none of them pulled over to talk to us. Eventually I got my friend home, dumped him on his couch, and left him there to sleep off his drunkenness. TLDR the best way to run from the cops is to get a little bit away from the problem and act like you are doing something else entirely. Motorbikes. The best advice ever was a feature in Performance Bikes magazine on the Chelsea Bridge slash Heston Services Friday Night Road Race slash Stunt Boys. At least three of these characters made it to GPs, MOTOGP. When you see the blue lights behind you, just fuck off. Do not panic, or ride any faster, take any risks you do not normally take. Your bike is much faster than their cars, just fuck off, get out of sight, park up, get away from the bike, change clothes, helmet, etc. So, I got an emergency call to get to a potential disaster 20 kilometers away, up the motorway, spanking a CBR 900 fire blade at about 150 miles per hour and knowingly passed a plainclothes car. A mile later I slowed for a 50 miles per hour camera, then for traffic, into 30 miles per hour limit, roundabout, then I heard them using the siren to move traffic aside. So I faked off sharpish, headed for the airport, again, advice from PB, no fly for helicopters. As I arrived at a set of lights, I saw a tiny flash of day glow yellow slash orange. Cop car waiting to knock me off. So I turned right through bollards and disappeared into a sheet housing estate. A free man. And luckily, the cunts are very versed in trapping escapees round there, and another car suddenly appeared in front of me, I braked hard and swerved the bike L. R to gauge grip and suss the escape, the pigs panicked and stopped slightly too fast, I dived to the passenger side as he was jumping out, arms outstretched to grab me. But no, it was not their day, his hands missed me by less than a foot, I faked off, this time without further drama, stuck it behind some shops, phoned a friend for helmet, jacket, lift, escaped, later a friend heed the bike, and it came back clean, it wasn't registered to me, but did not come back as police interest stacker, wanted, police already on their way, above all, remember the advice from PB, stay cool, just ride like normal. One time cops came to this giant house party on the second floor of this house. 
when cops were let in through the front door, people darted out of the back onto the deck and leapt off it. It was my best friend's house, so I knew there was a deck staircase leading to the ground. I went down and evaded the officer who was grabbing kids as they made the 20 feet plunge. A six person group of us met up about 15 yards into the dense forest and we hiked two miles that night through the brush to get to a highway with an adjacent dead end street. We waited there for DZ pickup and then we all met in the regular parking lot to hear stories of how others made it out. One kid in our group of six lost his sneakers in the mud when he leapt off the deck. Later in the forest his bare feet slid through the ice of a frozen stream and into the water below. I thought he was gonna lose his feet and I didn't know what to say to him. Let's keep it moving. He didn't lose his feet. He was fine. At another party, I just refused the breathalyzer, called my dad, told them I was leaving with my parents when they were to arrive. They tried to get me to blow into it and I continued to refuse and exclaim that I wasn't drinking. Eventually my dad came and I left. I was the only one who didn't get a ticket that day. A few times when I was in high school I'd see a cop while I was going like 90 in a 30 in the dead of night. I would drive with even more haste, pull into a driveway after a blind turn, and shut the lights off. I've seen the berries blow past like at least 3 times. This was all very foolish, I was young and dumb with a death wish. Back when some friends and I were teenagers and idiots, we were bored driving around our neighborhood, the details are fuzzy, so I'll just say somehow, we ended up repeatedly driving by this house with some younger kids playing waving rakes and other various items out the window. For whatever reason, this was enough for their mother to call the police. We make another pass and see a cop standing outside taking what was a totally worth his time report. The lady points, we wave the rakes again anyway, because this is stupid at this point. Cop hops in his car and chases after us. But our neighborhood was basically a maze, there were a few instances where we were coming across an intersection right as he was passing through another and shifting his course to catch us, but we eventually lost him. Not sure what we did after, probably went to the mall, or whatever idiot teenagers do. Also seen some posts here about party busts, this always worked for me in those instances. Cops show up, I'd run to a bedroom and hop under the covers, and pretend to sleep. It worked the few times I had to do it, but I may have just been lucky. They would shine their light into the room, and see me, and usually various other people in the bed asleep and just leave us alone. Your mileage may vary. For what it's worth, in my later teen slash adolescent years I figured out it was much better to not try to run and be honest. Got away with a lot more doing that. Was once pulled over while trying to run 8 miles across town to my house, completely hammered. I was probably 16 at the time, which made me not only underage drunk, but also out past curfew. I was just completely honest with the cop about trying to get home, and he just took me to a payphone to call someone to pick me up. I have never been the driver of a car that outran the cops, but I have been the passenger twice, both times in high school. The first time I was riding in the passenger seat with my boyfriend at the time, while we raced a charger on a major street that runs through the city. We passed the city line from Denver to a suburb named Cherry Hills Village, and right when we passed the line there were about 4 or 5 CHV police cruisers waiting for us. I believe Denver PD must have called ahead and warned Cherry Hills PD that we were heading their way. The charger was slightly ahead of us and immediately took a right into a subdivision and three of the cruisers followed in pursuit. My ex immediately took a left into a different subdivision and only one cruiser tailed us into the subdivision. We had enough distance between us and the cruiser that my ex was able to pull into a random person's open garage before the cruiser saw us. We managed to shut the garage door before the cruiser drove by, and we hung out in the garage for about 30 minutes before we cautiously took a back route out of the subdivision. I still have no idea how we managed to lose the police. I also do not know the fate of the charger driver. I imagine he was not as lucky as us though. The second time, I was riding with my ex, same ex from the previous story, in his friend's car. I was in the back seat for this story, and my ex in the passenger seat. We were weaving through cars on the interstate at 90 to 95 miles per hour in a 65 miles per hour zone. Suddenly I see a state trooper enter the highway and almost immediately flash his lights on. 
Instead of slowing and pulling over, X's friend accelerates up to 120 miles per hour and manages to lose him before exiting the highway and quickly pulling into a Nike parking garage. I hang around in all sorts of communities, and I've met quite a few people who have done this. I'll describe the things I hear the most you should note that this all depends on why you're running from the police getting from point A to B is always going to get harder the worse the crime on foot. Exercise just be healthier and nimbler than them. In car, speed, and skill you've got to have a 300. 500 plus horsepower vehicle turbos are more popular, but because of price the trick is not being obvious that you're fast you've got to know how to drift you've got to be able to swerve in between traffic at a minimum of twice its speed cop cars are fast and they handle very well the cops driving aren't that bad either, but they are not perfect usually, they are 250 HP, so you've got to be faster. You've got to know where you're going all of this is just so you know what to do. After you get on the highway and lose them just pull off and start doubling back in the least conspicuous way going fast isn't too bad. Just keep near the highway until you're sure you might be able to do residential in a fast 4x4 but likely not anything else you need to be able to go very fast very quick. And 4x4 is the most efficient and usually set up nice from the factory. Now here's the hard part, you need to insert yourself in a drug slash crime affiliated event races or something like that the fast and furious movers can pretty much explain the rest remember the more cheesy macho and just, what the fuck, kind irrational, the more you'll fit and you don't have to make sense you just have to be serious and say as little as possible you have to do this, because chances are you just ruined your life in society. Thanks to modern technology, the only escape is not being seen in the first place. Jumped fences, ran down sides of mountains, cutting through people's yards. As a skateboarder living in a town of 9k people I came to find out cops tend to get bored. Obviously the best places to skate were the ones where the big no skateboarding signs were at. Probably ran from cops over 20 times. There were certain escape routes we had at every school and business. Cop cars don't like driving up mountain roads, and if cops want to get out and chase you, they don't want to get far from their car without backup. I also remember a time where we would party on Mansion Hill which is where there used to be a giant mansion that belonged to the family that discovered Thishit Town. Prime party spot. Best part is that if you go up by the pool area you could barely see down on the road. One time teachers at our school got her an on tip that we would have guns and drugs up there. They were wrong on the guns part. Anyways we were waiting for our two buddies to bring us some party favors, not weed or alcohol, and they were a little late. Went up by the pool to see if I could see anyone. Looked down and saw a line of four cop cars all with their lights on. When I got down to the party area to tell everyone we started seeing flashlights. Here's the stupid part, one cop drew his gun and started yelling. Me and three buddies ran up to the pool area and around through steep rough blackberry bushes. Just as we make it around to a path that lead down our two buddies with the drugs, went up that backside and didn't see the cop cars. They start yelling hey fakers, what are you doing down here? We were still close enough to the cops that they flashed their lights over at us and we just yell cops, run. Ran down the hill towards a trailer park. Spent the next hour moving from yard to yard hiding behind whatever we could until we reached a friend's house. Seeing cops circling the areas and using their searchlights. Hindsight we should've just stayed up there. Our friends that didn't run said they just got warnings a couple got mips. As a teenager, three of us were almost caught trespassing. We were up on a 30 to 40 foot structure so we could see the cop coming before he put a visual on us. Climbed down quickly and turned off our phones. Me and one friend hit the ground so the cop's searchlight passed above our heads. Our third friend booked it around the building at full speed in flip flops. We had the advantage because we were kind of in the middle of a field and the cop had to make a choice to drive up onto the field or turn around and take the service roads around the field. Cop turned around. As soon as he did, the two of us who hit the ground booked it about three quarters of a mile toward my buddy's neighborhood, where my car was. Cop is screaming down the service road, so he could get a better angle of where we were likely running to. We had to stop about halfway there, to hide in some bushes, to avoid the searchlight again. 
Eventually we made it to my car and turned our phones back on. I told my friend, who was basically a sitting duck in the woods near where we were, to walk through people's backyards and get to a main street in our town and pretend as if he's taking a walk and to be on the lookout for my car. About 5 minutes later we see him on the street, I pull over quickly, he jumps in, and we get the fuck out of there, while two cop cars were still in the complex we were in. You may be asking, why the cops were chasing us, and continued to pursue trespassing teenagers. I'm guessing the police didn't have much to do late on a summer night in the suburbs. The other time we ran from the police we were trespassing, again, on a public park, and we had the advantage of being on low ground, and in the middle of a heavily wooded area. So we hit the ground and the searchlight passed over our heads by about 10 feet for 5 to 10 minutes then we abandoned ore sheet, old golf clubs and balls, and got out of there. Moral of the story, if you're going to trespass as a teenager, put yourself in an area where you can easily hide and the advantage swings toward you. Nighttime low ground, heavily wooded area, lack of access to where you are by road slash car. I never outran the cops, since I really couldn't, but was at house party that had the cops show up. Was at a house party that I got a ride there since I had recently wrecked on my bicycle and seriously sprained my ankle. Basically I was there for the booze and socializing. Now I was over 21, but a large majority of those at the party were not. Midnight rolls around and we see cops pull up outside point sheet. Doors were then locked, lights turned off, everyone came inside that was out back smoking, and we all settled down and gave the cops the silent treatment as they pounded on the door, ringing the doorbell, flashing lights into the basement. Not going to lie, I was about to sheet bricks, since I was of age, and I thought for sure I would get ticketed for contributing to minors. The cops stayed around for hours. My ride ended up escaping out the backyard hopping fences, he still got ticketed, because his car was out front with paraphernalia hanging out on the back seat, leaving me and my bum fucking ankle. I did have other friends there, and we all just hung out waiting for the cops to finally leave 4am finally rolls around and there are no longer any coppers outside. Great. One of my friends still there offered me a ride and we start walking out to his car. Suddenly a neighbor from across the street stands up from his porch. I had noticed him watching the house the whole night once the cops shows up and starts walking up to us. He asks us about the party and whatnot. I think he wanted to socialize since he offered to smoke us out. We hung out for an hour or so and then went home. He told us that he used to throw raging parties there in the late 90s and the cops would get called often. He knew some of them that were called out. He also warned us to stay in the neighborhoods till we got to the interstate, since the cops had taken everyone license plates down. Good times. Glad I couldn't run, because my friends who ditched me ended up running till 8am to get home through neighborhoods. Another time we were not so lucky. I was at my cousin's apartment which was on the second floor of a three floor building. Neighbors above called the cops. There was a knock at the door around 10:10 with no one at the peephole. I'm standing in the kitchen saying, don't open the door 5 minutes goes by, knock at the door again. Rumored opens door thinking it is her boyfriend. Nope. Full on cops and there was a bung in sight. I stashed my herbs behind the stove, since I could not be seen in the galley kitchen. All night the cops asked me if I was the one who supplied the greenery, which no I did not. They dumped all their alcohol, since there were minors. Took all the paraphernalia in sight. Gave us all warnings that they didn't want to come back out and left. Moral of the story, don't answer the door to cops at parties and always keep it locked. Drank too much at the office with friends on Friday night. Stupidly drove home. Yes I'm the worst. Decided 90 miles per hour would be a good idea down Main Street. Past a cop going the other way. He flips a beach upon seeing my reckless ass careening down a quiet street. I see him coming. So I turn frantically onto a bumpy dirt road leading to an apartment complex and bail out of the car, engine still running, two pack blasting from the stereo, door wide open. Run around the back of an apartment building and hide, cops all around, lights illuminating everything around me. They start knocking on all the doors thinking I went in one of the apartments. I wait until the last few cop cars passed and I dive through a bush cross the street, and duck and dodge my way through a trailer park like a Mexican on the run, working my way home. 
finally get home and pass out. Next day I'm sure I'm faked, so I get on my bike to go to the cop shop and fess up. Decided a hey, fuck it, wonder if my car's still there, since the cop shop was pretty close to the apartment complex. Sure enough it's parked there, they turned off the ignition for me, and closed the door, and left the keys in the ignition. They tore my dashboard up, presumably looking for something to nail me with, but didn't find anything. I drive the car home, and vowed never to drink and drive again. My car is still missing a big part of the plastic grill that tore off as I ripped around the apartment complex's crappy dirt roads. This was not me, someone I know ran from the cops because he was DUI. Turned his lights off and sped through a subdivision until he crashed into a row of parked cars. He had enough lead on the police car that he had time to get out and run before they got around the corner. He took his keys except for the ignition key. He was completely unharmed despite the car being totaled. He was able to make it home before the police arrived. He grabbed his spare key, put it on his key ring, hung it on the hook, and then changed clothes, and went to bed. A few minutes later they came knocking. He claimed to have been sleeping at home alone, and when they asked where his car was he said, out on the street. They asked where his key was, and he pointed to the hook that had his work keys and his ignition key. They they took him to the scene where his car was. Nobody had witnessed the crash so nobody could ID him. They couldn't use the fact that his ignition key was still with the car or not with the car against him because he had his ignition key. He argued it was an old used car bought locally and he had no control over a prior owner etc keeping a spare key. Finally, despite the crash being quite severe he had no injuries, nothing. They couldn't prove that he was driving. He played it like he was an innocent victim of car theft. Don't think they believed him, but he was never arrested or charged with anything. His insurance paid for his car as stolen. Pity that he couldn't have used his clear head and distress and smarts. Ignition key swap for getting a real job. A year later his life choices caught up with him, and he went to jail for a couple of years for felonious assault. Stuff happened in there that made him never want to go back, and he actually settled down to a normal job and life thereafter. Probably late, but I wanted to finally share an experience to Reddit. Plus, I know I'm late but anyways. In Chicago, people my age, around 16 to 20, usually go car hopping in poor areas for fun. I haven't made the strongest decisions, but reason being I'm from those poor areas. A few months ago, my friend told me she wanted to go in a steamer, stolen car, with a few friends and drink. I was down only because I haven't really had fun in so long, but it was a big mistake. I ended up getting so wasted that I wasn't really paying attention to the danger I put myself in. The car was a van with no plates and the driver was drinking himself. Eventually, after driving around for an entire day, the cops were behind us, and we had plenty of water and drinks in the car. Everyone told the driver pull over, but he started accelerating, and we ended up being in a car chase. He was so drunk that we swerved in opposite latest and the cars had to dodge us. It was extremely scary, but we ended up crashing, and the police weren't behind us anymore. Everyone ran out the car and into backyards. After jumping over gates and backyards, after what felt like forever, everyone split up, and it was just my friend and I. She tried jumping over a high gates, and ended up making a loud noise. The owner came out, and asked what was happening. I panicked but was able to come up with a lie. I told her there was a nearby police chase and we almost got shot at, so we starting running. She told us to come inside, and call our parents. I do not know who that lady was, but I'm sure she didn't believe us. She still allowed us in her home, and let us use her phone, even gave us cups of water. Scariest night of my life considering I know people who has done an entire year for car hopping. Never again will I do dump sheet like that in my life. Not really outrun, but I have three stories. I had a stressful week, and started to go a little batsheet. Drove my car to a neighborhood, and walked up to the police station across the street. I stood in front of the building by a busy road, played I fought the law by the clash on a portable speaker, and started dancing with a giant wooden middle finger statue. After about 10 minutes of this, I see a car slow down, and pick up his phone. It occurred to me, he was calling the cops, 
so I ran over to my car, got in, and started driving home. About 30 seconds later a cop car comes flying down the road at 60 miles per hour with his lights on, headed towards the police station. I had a good laugh. 2. Was speeding on the interstate and realized too late that I had just passed a cop. I see him pull out in my rear view just as I get over a hill and he loses sight of me. I booked it for the exit and he missed me. 3. Underage drinking party in high school. I had way too much and hear a knock on the door. I opened it and there were two police officers standing there. I panicked and slammed the door in their face while yelling cops. Sprinted out the back door, fell down, and basically crawled through a cornfield in the snow to get home because I was too drunk to walk. I was in a park after it closed, just smoking somewhat and enjoying the beach as I normally do. Unfortunately, cops started patrolling the place because of Pokemon Go players. I figured I never got caught, so I had nothing to worry about, and why the fact should I be restricted access to a public park just because I preferred being out at night. I ran down the trail past the beaches and up towards the road. I was doing my nightly run, and near the end, where I turn around, I saw a spotlight from the street point directly at me. I was pretty high and my heart jumped. I immediately turned around, because the way I was headed exited at the street. I went back down the trail to the beach. I then saw a car, maybe a mile away, driving down the trail towards me. I booked it in the opposite direction thinking I was trapped. I went down to the beach and just crouched, thinking I was behind a bush, hoping the cops wouldn't see me. They stopped right where I started heading towards the beach and got out of their car and pointed their flashlights at me. I figured I was faked. I had done a poor job hiding and wasn't actually behind anything. Just a guy crouching off to the right of the trail. I crouched there for what seemed like half an hour before the cops drove away. I went the opposite way and booked it out of the park, cursing at society and Pokemon Go because I'd have to avoid the park at night. One of my only escapes from life. I was 17 years old and I ran away with a friend of mine. We live in Las Vegas, so we went down to the strip to go drink because we thought we were so cool having no curfew on a school night. Her and I were both drunk, and we were sitting outside one of the casinos trying to borrow somebody's phone to call our ride that ditched us. We obviously look too young to be out past curfew. So a cop is walking by with two camera people probably for some cop show. And the cop is asking us how old we are, and if we have ID. I didn't have a state ID or anything. But I had some other girl's school ID, so I give the cop that. So the cop has us walk to his patrol car which is two casinos down. They take my bag which had a huge bottle of Captain Morgan in it and set it on the hood of his car. The cop is in his car running our information I guess. And we are about 10 feet away from the cop car and I look at my friend saying we should run. She was hesitant but then told me to run first. So I did. I ran up to the hood of the car and grabbed my bag and dipped so damn fast. My friend also started running. Our dumbasses cross through traffic, and I'm surprised neither of us got hit, because we didn't even luck before crossing. I went one way and she went another. The cop ran after her, and one of the camera guys ran after me. The cameraman caught up to me, and was trying to convince me to stop running away. A tourist walks by, and sees the camera guy trying to talk to me, so then the tourist starts yelling at the camera guy to leave me alone. While that is happening I start running again and finally find some place to hide out for a bit. I did get away but sadly my friend got caught and sent to juvie. That same morning though I took a bus back to our side of town. While I was walking to some apartments to use their computers my dad just happened to be on his way to work and found me. I felt like such a badass but I'll look back now and boy was I dumb as teenager. But that's my story. Also, sorry if the format is all messed up. I wrote this from my phone. Cranking up the highway in upstate New York back in the mid 90s. I'm doing 90 or 95 and look over in the median after catching a flash of color. There sits one of New York State's new interceptors. I'm just cresting a rise at the moment I see his lights come on. As I drop out of sight I see a semi in the slow lane up ahead. I jam on the brakes 
and slide in behind him doing a solid 55 miles per hour, state speed limit at the time, acting like a good boy. Here comes the interceptor, screaming up the highway, lights and siren going. He shoots past me, and then slams on his brakes as he begins to pass the semi. I see him look over his shoulder at me, look at his radar gun, look ahead of the semi, and then back at me again. I figure I'm screwed, and I'm ready to pull over, then the guy jumps on the gas again, and takes off, we pass him further up the road with a BMW pulled over, karma caught up with me 2 hours later, I was off the highways, and was out in the middle of nowhere, I come around a bend in the road, and see another trooper in the other lane coming at me, and as I pass him, doing almost 80 in a 55 zone, I see his brake lights come on, I just pulled over and waited. He seemed surprised that I was waiting for him. I've got two. One involves me, the other involves a friend of mine. He was involved in both stories actually. First, my friend. He was driving on the interstate belt route around our city. This particular section of freeway sits right at the base of the mountains. He stoned and doing about 80 in the early 90s when the speed limit was federally mandated at 55. Seeing that the cop is in a Mustang, and he has four-wheel drive, he simply drives off the side of the freeway, up the hilly mountain slope on the side, and keeps climbing, until he reaches the road above the freeway. Crashes through the chain link fence separating the freeway from the side street, and heads into the neighborhood. Unfortunately, there's an exit about a quarter mile past where he jumped off, so he doesn't have a huge lead on the cop. So he's casually cruising through the neighborhood, and sees an open garage. Pulls into the garage, jumps out of his Bronco, and pushes the door button, just as the cop drove by. He hid out in that garage for about 45 minutes before braving it, and heading back out for home. Story 2, I was on a road trip with a bunch of friends on our sport bikes. We were probably doing 110, again, on the freeway with the 55 limit in now Erisville Utah. Seriously, now Erisville. Dead in between to small towns set 40 miles apart with maybe 3 to 4 arch exits between them. We saw the cop way too late to slow down, so we hit it instead. Split up with some of us taking ranch exits, and others flying in a straight line as fast as we could get there. I made it to the small town 15 ish miles down the road, jumped off the freeway, and booked it into a diner with one friend, trying to play it casual. A few minutes behind us, to cops pull in see our bikes, and come to check on us. They grill us for 45 minutes about where our friends went, what the hell were we thinking, etc. We played dumb, and told them we were headed the opposite direction from what they described, and that it was just the two of us. Our waitress covered our butts, and told the cops we had been in the diner for about 30 minutes, before they got there, and eventually they accepted our word and left, even though they knew we were in that group. Seriously, we were sitting there with nothing but water in front of us, in a nearly empty diner. They absolutely knew the waitress was full of it. The cops ended up finding about 6 out of the 15 of us, but only stuck one guy with any sort of charges, and only because he was dumb enough to own up to it. Thankfully, he was smart enough to tell them he had just joined our group, while riding down the freeway, and didn't know anyone else in the group. Everyone else had come up with a story, and stuck to it. Plunger, C7ZR1, R35 GTR, Supra, and every Mustang with an exhaust that thinks he's fast. I just bought weed, so I'm not speeding, and all traffic laws are being obeyed. All I can think is he watched me pull out of an own by area. So I do the logical thing and go woaty onto the closest interstate on ramp and keep it that way until I can't see flashing lights. Glance down. 165 miles per hour. Crown Victoria didn't have a chance. Unfortunately this was something that me and my friends had to do on an almost weekly basis during our early teens. We would like to buy our beer and post up in the neighborhood park after dark, since we couldn't drink at anyone's house, and it was a central part of the neighborhood. We had several other spots like the graveyard or the abandoned train car, but they were just so far out of the way that we would only trek there for important things. Plus the park, ran into a cement field and a dirt baseball field that bordered woods in the neighborhood dump, which made for prime jetaways. 
Anyway the cops started figuring out that we would be there every Friday and Saturday night and started coming around with just one cop car. There was usually at least 15 of us, so you split up and they really can't do much. Soon enough multiple cars started coming around at once that we would really have to scramble to avoid getting a ride in the paddy wagon to certain doom at home. We ran through woods, hopped fences through backyards, when swimming through what cold have only been radioactive waste and been infested with ticks to avoid getting snagged. Then there's the times that detectives sneak up behind your group because you're being too loud to hear them. You kinda lose the balls to run when you have their gun pointed in your face. Have to say the most exhilarating one was the time I was sure I was gonna get caught. My stepbrother, some friends and myself had ATVs that we would take into the woods slash dump to ride through some trails we had made. One of the assholes was doing donuts in the baseball field when we were on our way there and some cops started budgieing down on the side of the park we were on. We were able to cut through the park and rush down the streets to try to get somewhere undercover and turn the bikes off. The scary sheet was I was only 13 and had a much smaller bike than the rest, mine only went maybe 50 miles per hour while this could 100. So if being slow wasn't enough, I also took a turn too fast and rode into two wheels. Luckily there was a truck there that I was able to push myself off of and ride the bike. We made it to another large area of brush, turned off the bikes and called my dad to come pick us up on a back road over there. We lived in Wards the boondocks of New York City and were regularly bored. Pretty sure we just put ourselves in these situations to have some fun in an otherwise boring a sheet neighborhood. Here we have the classic high school cops story. Giant house party in an upscale neighborhood wait for it. The parents weren't home. Since it was my friend's little sister I took pity when I noticed she was sitting alone on the stairs obviously not having a good time. I asked a few people, upon her request, to leave and of course they don't. Not 5 minutes later do I pass the front door and see a car in the moonlight out on the street that looked like it had some sort of graphic. As I step closer to the window, to get a better look I see the flashlight flick on. Fuck. I run to the kitchen grab my best friend and her little sister, who came with us to cheer up after a breakup. We bolt out the back door into a snowy field and start running through the frozen brush. About 15 to 20 kids were also running out the back and shortly after a cop's flashlight comes bouncing behind us. We get separated, and I'm following my friend Mike. Being in Uggs, and also having classically fell down as the cop was hot on our trail, exhausted from sprinting through the foot of snow, I say, Mike, I can't do it. I can't go on. He clearly didn't have any sort of crush on me cause he took off. I drop down and crawl on my hands and knees through the snowy brush with the hope of making my path in the snow less obvious. It felt like a horror movie. Huddled under the snow in the brush I stare at my phone. Parents should be calling me any minute. Important fact, my car was parked right out front of the party, and usually cops in our town would call the parents of all the kids whose cars were parked there. So I start to hear crunching around me, and I try to calm myself down and not breath so loudly. I know it's the cop looking for one of us to bust, the bastard. God forbid there's a shred of fun. Anyways, I wait and wait, and finally when I think the coast is clear, I emerge from my snowy brush and look back at the house. I see the wee woo lights going in front of the house and another one at the front of the neighborhood. I decided to cut my losses and just leave my car. I pull out my snow covered phone to call my friend, and just as I'm about to hold it up to my ear I see the exact same car. It's distinctive, my dad drives about to pull up to the house. Welp, glad I showed the cop up with my 4x100 skills, but now it's all over. Well, no call still. The black car, that looks like my dad's passing the house. I sheet my pants in disbelief. I continue to call my friends, that weren't there to pick me up, and laugh about it at McDonald's with my best friend and her sister who also escaped. Too bad all the girl's actual friends got in trouble and the people who weren't really that close got away. My car didn't get a ticket or anything, and I picked it up the next day after making up some bullshit story to my parents. Hurrah. Interesting extra tidbits. One girl hid in the closet the whole time and avoided a drinking ticket. Another guy said he had to go to the bathroom and ran out the front door and got away. 
one of the girls I told to leave that didn't, ended up trying to run out the back with us, and broke arrested, and a broken foot. Shoulderless and yo. TLDR. Cops bust a house party, where my car is parked at. I run out the back door into a field with my best friends into those tall cattail things, but no actual water, and drop down in the brush to cover my tracks. I hear the cop crunching past me with the flashlight and eventually get picked up by some other friends, and kill the game. A couple years ago, when I was a freshman in college I was at a party in this trap house, that I usually hung out inside. The house was in the ghetto, wrong side of town, no street lights, if it helps you imagine the situation. Five of my friends were there, one is so drunk, and he already puked all over the sidewalk outside. Two of them were tripping balls on some acid they got, but the fourth friend was whacked out on molly, fifth friend and I were just stoned out of our minds. The owner of the house went around whispering into the ear of one person in all the groups of friends that the cops were occasionally passing by the house and it might be time to bounce. He ended up telling me, I guess because everybody else was having fun and doing stuff while I was just chilling out. I then got up and did what needed to be done. I whispered to Fifth that it's time to go, wait in the back while I gather the rest of the guys. He nodded and I went looking for the others, I found 4th pretty easily, and said it is getting late and the party is too loud, I think we should get out of here, I don't want to make you go, but if you want to head out then wait in the back, 5th should be there. With the easiest 2 out back I set myself for the 2 people I need to be careful with, one wrong word and they could flip sheet. When I found them, I patted them both on the back, after yelling out their names, 2nd, 3rd, how are you brothers Tone? I succeeded in grabbing their attention by the balls. Second said hey man, we are doing just great. How about you? Now is when I have to get them in the backyard without freaking them out. I'm fine but this party is too crowded and it's killing my vibe. What do you guys think? Third looked up and said yeah, I guess you're right. Let's head back to the dorm for a bit and maybe grab breakfast. Mega score, 8. Wait for me in the back while I get first. 4th and 5th should be there. The last one, I get on my phone and find a new 15 minutes until it arrives. I mark the pickup location on the street that runs parallel to the one the house is on and make my way to the second floor. He's sitting on the couch, looking a lot better than he did 10 minutes ago. There's not really a whole lot of people up here, just those who like their opiates. I say to him hey bro it's time to go, let's get out of here. He begins to ask why, but I form the word cops to him, before he can get his sentence out. We make our way down the steps, and into the backyard to find the crew waiting for us. I tell them, that an Uber is on the way, and where we need to go to get picked up but only 4 people will fit. I elect to walk and 5th, the bro that he is, said he will walk with me. Problem solved, the 4 guys start walking then I turn to 5th and say let's get some herb, before we head back, it will help the guys relax. We go back in, and get the grass, when we hear it, sirens fack, I pay the man, and wish him good luck before 5th, and I head out to the backyard. Cops have surrounded the place, it's a raid. I tell 5th that, if one of us gets, caught the other runs no matter what. Over the fence we run, I can hear boots hit the pavement in front of us, we both head left away from the campus, so we can try to lose them in the darkness. I get out my phone, and call one of my other brothers in the hope that has awake. It rings and rings and rings. What felt like an eternity passes. Hey man what's up? Listen bro we gotta get off the street. Do you know anybody that's around street name we can hold up by? Yeah there's a guy that's about a quarter mile away. I will call him, and see if he will let you. I will text you. We keep running, and the officers, that were chasing us give up. But it's not over. I can hear sirens getting closer, so we duck into an alley and hide behind some tash cans. When I get the text. Go to house number on street name. John is there. Tell him I sent you. We make a mad dash for it, and we stay at the house for 20 minutes, smoke a bowl with the guy for his time and head back to the dorm. It wasn't the first time and it certainly wasn't the last. At a work Christmas party one year. It was last call and I went to get one more. They said last call had passed. I tried to talk the girl into giving me one anyway. A guy in street clothes next to me tells me to get lost, and that he's a manager there, off duty. 
I told him to go to hell then again tried to talk the guy into giving me a drink. The next thing I knew he's pushing me out the door. I decide to put my hands up because it's a work event and I probably caused enough problems. My coworkers see this and grab the guy and pin him against the wall. We start yelling at each other, but I'm outside now so whatever. Things start to calm down as my company spills out into the parking lot. Then one guy in our company whips a snowball at another guy in our company and a fight breaks out in the parking lot. Someone comes out and says the cops are coming so everyone leaves immediately. I can't find my ride, so I walk across the street to a gas station. I watch the cops come and go, and I call my ride to come get me. He says he's on his way. So I walk back over to the parking lot. I'm leaning against the bike rack outside, and the guy who I had initially got into an argument comes out. He doesn't say a thing. He pulls out his cell phone. I know immediately he's calling the police, and I'm way too drunk to be able to defend myself through dialogue. I decide to disappear. I walk around the corner of the building, where there's an empty lot next to the building. Across the empty lot there's a wooden fence, and behind it was an apartment complex. I decide to make a run for it. I make it three quarters of the way across the lot, when I see the flashing lights coming around the corner of the building. There's no time to make it to the fence, so I hit the deck, close my eyes, and stay incredibly still. Squinting I could see he's scanning the field with his spotlight. I hear his car get further away I open my eyes and I don't see him anymore. I again walk towards the fence. I make it to the fence and start climbing. I peek over the fence and I see a car come flying around the corner of an apartment building. I duck back down into a creek bed and wait. I see the spotlight again through the fence. So I know they are still looking for me. I waited in that creek bed for hours in the rain during a December night in Michigan before my mom had to come pick me up early in the morning. Staying out of sight is crucial 